Today, what I've done, I've taken my plain piece of Yupo paper and I, for fun, have just set some tape on it in random patterns um, just for experimentation. We're going to see just how much or what kind of effect we get from it. So uh, I did it first uh, for my stage one where we're going to create some energy and flow. Now this little guy, I'll have his screenshot up for you right now. I'm trying to think of what colors I want to use. So he is a little gray squirrel, which means he's got a little bit of brownish uh, gold in his fur. But instead of coming in warm, I think I want to start with cool and get more of that gray down. And I'll come in with warms in a later stage. I'm just using my intuition for that. There's no real rhyme or reason. I could start really warm and add pops of gray later, but for some reason I feel like I need to start with some cools. So what I'm going to do today, um, the only extras I have on my palette, I have a little bit of permanent um, violet dark and I have a little bit of uh, permanent rose. I may or may not use them. I think I will use the permanent violet dark, but permanent rose today, hard to say. If you don't have them, just mix a purple and a pink out of the colors that you do have on your palette. I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine blue to that. I'm going to get a nice wet mix because this is our first stage. It doesn't need to be tons of pigment. We want energy and flow. Now, because he's sitting fairly still, I don't think I'm going to do too much splattering. I'm going to just put on some of that lovely purple I just mixed. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to wet my brush. I'm going to come in and I'm going to move some of that into large larger just sort of areas. Now there is quite a bit of shadow in this area of our reference photo and I'm going to stick to the reference photo I think for the most part. So I'm going to bring in some of that lovely purple down here, that nice wet purple we just mixed and we're going to bring it right off of the, the, the little piece of paper here. Now I have just a, a squeegee that I got at the dollar store and um, sometimes it's fun you could just use the squeegee for marks and today I'm just I don't know I'm in a playful mood so I'm just into experimenting today so we're just going to push that with the squeegee a little bit until I get something that's relatively interesting oh that's kind of neat I like that and uh, for the sake of play today I also have um an old kneaded eraser and this one has actually been dropped so many times there's pencil shavings in it I think I see a piece of cat fur randomly sticking out but what I want to do is I want to make kind of a round stamp like this and I want it to look like the end of a, a pencil eraser just a flat round um, you can see I just flattened it there after making it kind of long and cylindrical or sausage like and what I'm going to do now I'm just, I want to play. So, oh, I got some fur on there. I'm going to flatten it even more just by pressing it onto my Yupo. So now basically all I did was make a round stamp and then I can knead this and make it into any other shape I want. Um, it's, I'm not going to use it for drawing again. So I think we've come in with that nice wet purple. So I think what I want to do now is come in with this, let's come in with that lovely manganese blue. It's just a nice bright spot. And what I want to do is I'm just going to make some some sort of stamped marks and what I'll I'll, I'll do them over the lines um, and that will kind of help give us some more definition. So I could just sit here and do this. That's going to get pretty boring after a while. But what does become interesting is if we break that pattern up with that line. So not only will bringing the dots onto the line break up the lines, it's also going to break this pattern up that I'm doing. So that looks really isolated down here. We may not see any of it by the time we get to the final layer, or we might see a lot of it. We might love it and embellish it even more. But what I'm going to do is I'm mixing that kind of with what's already left on my palette from the light, light purple. And I'm just, I'm going to create some more up here. Now because I mixed it with the purple it won't be quite so bright but it will definitely be recognizable. Your eye will say hey wait that's kind of the same value that's down there or the same hue anyway. Now I'm just going to randomly just poke a few more up here because I don't want to and today I want to have fun just because you know I think squirrels are fun. When I watch them I enjoy watching them. They're quite 
uh, comical, especially if they're hiding um, the seeds and nuts they're finding. <laughs> and it's like they never remember. I'm sure they remember where they put them, but you just never know. So I like that. Um, I don't think I want to do any more right now with my needable eraser. So I'm just going to wet it a little and wipe it off. Um, and I'm going to set that aside. And I think what I'll do now is I'm going to do just a bit of a spritz with my, my water bottle onto our piece, right kind of through the center. And I'm going to take, let's see, what have we've got? A pretty little blue going on there. So I think what I'll do is I'll add some, let's add some alizarin crimson red. We're going to warm it up a bit now, but I still want it on the purpley side, which will still read cool. And there's a lot of shadow here on the squirrel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that into the wet spritzing that we just did. I don't need a lot of water on my brush, so I'm taking a lot of the water off because I've already spritzed water onto the paper. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring that down. I'm dabbing it on, mixed it a bit in with the purple that's already there. And then I want to just kind of, I'm going to look at the darker areas of the squirrel. And I'm going to add this where sort of the darker areas seem to be. So on a value scale and when you're looking at color, specifically on a value scale, red is, it's a medium dark value. So I can get away with suggesting the darks on this little guy just using this beautiful red. And of course, I'm bringing it in to the detail we already made. I'm going right over the lines. I'm pretending that we never put the tape on. Now, as far as the tape goes, just use painter's tape if you've got some. Scotch tape might be a little too hard to get off, so I, I would be hesitant to use scotch tape. There's a bit of shadow down here as well that's quite dark, so I'm gonna bring this right in there. Uh, I'll do that again with a bit more alizarin crimson. And I'll add in our ultramarine blue because that's kind of what we had in the initial mix with the manganese blue. And then just sort of get that purpley uh, red again there. And then I'm going to bring that in into the shadow is considerably darker down there. So let's just give that a nice puddle. And this is still a relatively dry brush. I'm coming in here and I'm just going to spread that into kind of the darkest area that I see in the shadows. And I'm not going to go too far with the dark because when you have a shadow, especially a cast shadow from an object, the shadow's always the darkest where it touches the object. And then as it dissipates from the object, the shadow dissipates as well. And it's just the way the light works uh, as we see it. And there's a bit of a shadow from a foot over somewhere in this area. Now, see, I went right over the manganese blue dots that I did. I'm not worried about them. They don't have to be pristine or precise. So I'm leaving them there quite like that. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to make some brush strokes now. And you all know me with my wonderful little... Um, my twig tool. <laughs> so I think what I'll do is I'll use my twig tool. I'm going to pull into the squirrel uh, and push as well. So we have some that are going into some wet areas that are mimicking wet fur or just fur. And then as I pull it in, those will also indicate fur-like strokes later pulling the color in. What goes out must come in. It's, it's yin and yang. That's all you really have to remember. Um, and I don't want too, too many down here, maybe just a bit here. I like that happening there. That's a bit geometrical. There's a bit of almost a square happening. And I'm going to leave that for now. I may remove it later. It may not look organic enough. Um, but okay, I like that. So I think what I'll do now is I'm just going to drop in while everything's wet. And again, I'm just experimenting. I'm having fun at this stage. I'm not sweating too much. Um, I just want to play around and see what happens. I'm going to come out with a bit more of that, um, the, uh, the dark purple that I've got on the palette today. And that is Permanent Violet Dark Fluid Acrylic by Golden. Um, and again, it's nice and transparent for a dark. So um, again, we'd have to layer it to get it really, really, really vivid in color. So I'm going to come back in here into the reds and I'm just going to poke a little bit of that beautiful like it's a beautiful color uh, and again if you don't have it on your palette don't sweat it just mix a purple and I really like <laughs> hard to believe this is going to turn into a gray squirrel isn't it <laughs> we have a really interesting abstracted uh, thing coming out here and that's good that's kind of what I was hoping for um, so I'm really loving this oh my goodness it's so 
Oh, it is yummy, yummy. And again, we're at that stage. What happens if I'm not worried about anything that's resembling a gray squirrel? I'm looking at my reference photo just for the larger shapes. And because the squirrel's not really engaging in any activity, I think that's what prompted me to, to kind of want to put the dots down. So the, the squirrel doesn't just look like it's sitting, um, you know, in the universe floating around on a piece of Yupo paper. Um, so maybe that just anchors it to the background for me a little. And I've wanted to get a bit more experimental in my mark making um, and see how much, how far I can push the boundary between abstracted marks and realistic subjects. And that's another reason why I'm doing this. And I really like using round dots because my ancestry is Métis and they don't necessarily have a very specific style of painting um, like the Woodland School um, that um, Morriso had made very popular in the 70s and 80s, um, maybe even the 60s. But they do have wonderful hand beaded um, ceremonial traditional pieces that were worn as um, a specific purpose and meaning. So I love that the round dots, they remind me of seed beads. And that's one of the reasons why I use the round dots when I do make abstracted work, because for me, they represent those seed beads and the traditional beading. Um, I may incorporate more marks at a later stage in this piece that represent maybe stitching as in hand sewing. Um, we'll see. I don't know once I get there, I may or I may not. Um, I also may um, take some of the traditional Métis flower patterns and designs and incorporate that somehow as well, just as an honor to my heritage, but I may not, we'll see. I'm evolving my own style and when you're evolving your own style, anything goes and nothing goes. <laughs> you don't know until you get there and I'm not at the end of my journey, so gratefully. I did get my COVID uh, vaccination this week, my first shot, which uh, was a bit sooner than um, my age group. Uh, so I'm really happy that uh, that's happened. So I'm gonna just leave that now and let that dry. Welcome back everybody. We're heading into uh, stage two, where I place the features and in this particular case, it's going to be the eyes, the beautiful little snout, the hands are relatively important, and of secondary importance are the ears and the feet. They will help direct our eye in the composition, um, but I really need to get the proportions of the eyes and the snout and those hands. Um, in the right places for this to be believable and uh, as long as I can do that then the, the feet and the ears will just help to um, move our eyes around that uh, wonderful little piece. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get my um, half inch or sorry my quarter inch flat my very well used very well loved cotton brush as you can see with the duct tape keeping it together um, and i do have a habit i leave my tools in my water receptacle um, which is why the paint peels off which is fine unless it gets stuck on a painting so this stage may be a little bit boring for you to watch um, because I, I tend to do it a little slower. It's not as, as fun and as expressive as putting this initial layer down on the um, paper. And you'll see too that I just, I peeled the tape off. I didn't feel you needed to watch that. Um, so go ahead if you did use tape to peel that off and uh, see what you have left on your, um, on your paper. It's kind of fun because you know, really, I could just turn that anyway and go ahead and, and paint the squirrel on, but I do like it this way simply because I was thinking of the tail coming up and off the composition. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mix a gray, a bit of a darker gray. Um, we did use quite a bit of the, the beautiful permanent violet dark, so I'm going to continue in the same vein, but I will come in now with my French ultramarine blue, or actually I think it's just ultramarine blue, and uh, I will add some of the permanent violet dark to it. Now, of course, this is giving us a lovely blue purple 
and in order to gray that up we need to add a bit of uh, I'm going to use pink and I'm going to put in some of the gold and that'll give us a gray and you'll see that here when I mix them so that is a nice violet gray that's a very soft gray um, I think I want it a bit darker than that though so I'm going to go ahead and add some more ultramarine blue in there. There, that's better. I just want something that's going to be different than what's already down here. So I can actually uh, see where these features are going to be. I'm just going to puddle that. So I've got a nice little puddle of it there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start um, anticipating based on where I've cropped my photo, where the features are going to be. I think we've got an eye approximately who in this area here is going to be the one eye and I'm going to check the the angle coming from the eye to the tip of his little snout there and it is roughly that now that's pretty static that line there there's lots going on here right now I'm not worried about this yet. That was That's probably gonna get covered up. I'm just gonna break that little bit of a line up though because it's not necessary at this stage to have 100% of a line there. The only time I would have 100% of a line that's not broken on an animal is if I was doing a whisker. Um, but everything else is broken up by either fur or feathers or the way the light's reflecting. And his little eye, because eyes are rounded, I'm just going to do some strokes with my color shaper. Um, and in this case, it's sort of elliptical. So I'm just doing, and I'm guessing right now the size of that eye based on my sheet of paper. Now um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to measure with the end of my paintbrush the width of the eye on the left as I look at the photo. And I'm going to measure across based on the corner of it. We got one. Uh, two. Okay, so this eye here, which, okay, so the bottom of this eye is the top back of this eye. And <laughs> did you get that? <laughs> the bottom of that eye is basically, so that's a little big. The bottom of this eye here, when I hold my paintbrush up level, with my reference photo. The bottom of this eye here is the top back of this eye over here. Now the distance between this eye and this eye is actually two widths of that eye. Now you'll see more, I have a download um, I'm working on that I'll be putting on the website um, and then you can download that and it will explain in detail how to get these proportions correct without really using a ruler. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to make some circular shapes with my color shaper um, simply because that's, you know, eyes are round and they're a socket in the head and if I have these kind of rounded eluded forms initially as I layer above them, some of those marks will stay in it and some of them will get covered up. But I get some interesting um, uh, details this way. Sometimes happy, sometimes I've got to paint over them. It's a little challenging sometimes, but... Okay. Okay, so the width of the eye this way and I got to keep my elbow straight now, is two, one, two. So I'm a little far over. So the eye here actually should be in this area. So let's just wipe that off with our finger. I'm not, I'll leave that staining there. I'm fine with that. I'm going to come ahead now. I'm going to just use my color shaper again to give it somewhat of a, an eye shape. Now this eye here, now we're closer to what is seen on our reference. I'm not worried about specific details yet. I just want to get my shapes in and I want them to be in the right spot, the right distance away. And again, I got to move that a little. 
seems I was a little too close the first time, a little, or a little too far the second, <laughs> a little too close the first time. No, the second time, a little too far the first time. So this, third time's a charm, right? Well, I'm still a little too close. I've got to push that back just a bit more. So this is why I, you know, at this stage, um, I, I like doing it now. It's important. If I leave it till later, my goodness, all the features would be in incorrectly. Um, there. Let's see how that goes. So it's got to come down this way. And again, I'm just using my finger to wipe up the excess paint. I don't mind this, um, the little bit that's left behind. It's just, it's covering up the white. And, you know, he's in shadow on this side anyway, so this is probably going to be helpful in the end. My only concern right now is getting that eye positioned correctly. Now, again, measuring the reference photo, if I hold my paintbrush straight up to that reference photo, the back of this eye is relatively at the bottom of this eye. So that is roughly where I want it to be. I just got to make sure, I'll, I'll just get rid of that line now. And then I'm going to make sure I've got that width right between the distance between the eyes correct. Okay. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so we pretty much got it there. So as I build up detail now around this portion, I, I know that I've got enough distance for his snout. Um, and I know that his eyes are far enough apart for the, the, uh, the light that's coming in and the dark. And again, I will be building up our detail in stage three. I'm not worried about it now. I just want to make sure that those are in the correct area and they're pretty much, they don't have to be exactly the right size, but pretty darn close to it. And now I'm just going to see based on that measurement of the one eye. So what I, I'm doing is I'm measuring the distance from here to here of that eye on our reference photo. And now I'm going to measure that distance and see how far down the tip of the snout is going to be based on that measurement. Mm, looks like it's pretty much two. Yep, so with my straight elbow, I'm going to measure that eye. And I've got one eye closed to do this as well. I'll mark it with my fingernail on my painting. And then I'm going to come down two of those. And this is approximately the bottom of his snout. So he's got that beautiful little nose. And that lovely red dark in there is going to be perfect because it's right basically where his little, his little mouth is. So how exciting is that? Yay! So that will come right down to there. So now we have sort of the basic shape of his head. Now I can just go ahead and allude to this. I'm going to break that line up a bit, but that'll be the upper portion of this little guy's head. His eye does stick out a little. I just want to measure that eye one more time because it's about one. Yeah, so that eye actually can come in a little, but we'll worry about that after. Um, and then we're going to come up. I'm going to see how far the ears are based on that one measurement I took of the eye. Okay, so the distance from this corner of this eye to this corner, if I go up that same distance, that's where the beginning of this ear will be. So I'm just going to check here. And this is all proportion. Oh, so it's got to be here. So that upper ear is going to be in this area. Nice. Oh, such a little cutie. It comes down a little there because we go down the back of the head. And then we have the shadow here. And then, of course, we have the, sh the, uh, the ear that's facing the sunlight or our source of light. It is one. Uh, 
let's see here. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so I've got another measurement. So the distance of our eye from there to there is also the distance from our eye to the beginning of our ear from here to here. Now, that is also the width of his ear, which I guessed basically bang on. Um, and it's the height of from the bottom of the ear here to where it angles upwards. So I will go ahead and measure what I've already got down to make sure I'm in proportion. And look at that. Nice. Okay, so yeah, that, that was proportioned really well. So I'm just going ahead and I'm just marking some general, um, it's a bit, you know, this is darker here in our reference photo. So that's why I'm being a little more liberal with the gray and I don't mind putting a bit more down. And I'm going to go ahead, measure that eye again, go from this edge of this ear, I'm measuring across, it's one to the top of the bend of the ear facing our light source. So, and then that ear is based on that measurement. Now, if you've got a really, really, really good eye for measuring, um, you know, if you can guess what an inch is without measuring an inch, when it starts here, um, you know, be my guest if you want to just put this all in freehand. I just find nothing is more frustrating for me than I just got to get the angle on that second <laughs> little ear. I want to get it done correctly. We've got a very important shadow coming off of it. So if the ear is off a little, it will be obvious because we're going to be highlighting that with the shadow and the darkness. So. Okay, so here we have the basic shape of this little guy's head. We got eye, eye, snout. And I'm going to take, because this is a little dark down here, just because of the way our initial wash went, I'm just going to highlight that with a bit of white for now. So I know that's the bottom tip of his little nose. His little nose pad. Such a cutie. And there. Okay, and let's see now. I'm going to go ahead using my gray. I've got a bit of white there too. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to start measuring down because those hands are what I want to put in next before I do anything else. And then from the hands, we'll go down and put the feet into the right place. And I'll just hold this up a little closer to the camera so you can see we've got eye, eye, uh, snout, I made a little white line showing where the bottom of his snout is. And then we're coming up to the one ear and then the second ear that's in shadow. And I'm really liking what's going on. This, these lines are going to kind of coincide with where his tail's meeting his body. So, um, and some of it's going to get covered up and some of it won't. We'll see. We don't know what we're going to end up with at the end. Or I don't know what I'm going to end up with. If you do, hey, <laughs> let's have a party. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to start to, I'm going to use the same reference. I'm going to use the, the length of that eye. I'm measuring the eye again from here to here. And I'm seeing how many times I have to go down with that measurement until I get to the hands or to the paws in this case. But they're so cute. They look like little hands. Two to the snout. Okay, so... It's two and a half to the top of the hand, three to the un or two to yeah, three to the finger. One. 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 Two. So we're in here in this area. Okay, so we'll have the one hand is in shadow coming this way a little. There seems to be a bit of triangle of darkness there. A triangle of darkness. And then we have a little bit of a, his other arm coming off this way. And halfway down the eye, it sort of comes up to his shoulder area. 
Nice. Okay, so I'm just going to make a little bit of a darker color again to go into some of these areas um, so I can see them a bit better. There. So here I'm going to come in again where the top of the, the one hand is underneath his muzzle. It has a dark uh, triangle there and then we have a bit of a triangle the way it meets there and then his little paw comes off this way. Now I'll see if I can do anything with the color shaper that may look a little like fingers or a paw or suggest sometimes just scraping around I can get something that resembles um, claws, paws, you just never know. You don't know unless you give it a try. So, and it looks like we see one, two, three of his little digits on that side and we get a clear, there's I'm going to just do that. And then we have kind of an extended knuckle and then some more dark underneath. Okay. So that is his little paw. And it kind of comes in. So this little paw here kind of comes in line with this eye. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just, I knew that eye was just sticking out just a little too much and it might not look like much now, but by the time I finish, if I leave it that far out, he's going to look like a bug eyed squirrel, which might be great for a Pixar animated movie. Not so much for my painting. So there, and I'll just get rid of that excess little purple. I just wanted to move it in a little. And again, I'm not going for fine detail here. I'm just getting my proportions correct. I want to make sure when I look at what I have down here, it's going to look very similar to what I'm seeing in my reference photo. And that, um, you know, it's believable as far as the overall shape goes. I'm just looking at my shapes looking at the distance between shapes in relation to the size of the shapes right now. So um, I'm just reinforcing where these shapes are and you might see some of his features start to pop out now that I'm I'm just sort of highlighting where the highlights are and I'm going to cover up part of this line with the tape. I do find that a bit distracting because his face is right there. <laughs> but the tape was an experiment. I just wanted to give it a try. So now I'm, this is kind of the, the base of his neck where it's meeting the shoulder. We don't see much here. We just sort of see little puffs of, of um, uh, light and dark fur. And that's about it for the one side of his body on this side. And I'm going to go back in then and suggest a bit more. I just need to mix up a bit more dark and again my dark I'm using permanent violet dark ultramarine blue just in case you can't see what I'm doing. I'm almost in equal in equal proportions there and then I'm throwing in a bit of our gold and that's giving it a nice warmth and I'm going to put in a bit of our our pink as well and that's going to I'm getting a bit I put I was heavy on the gold and I'm okay with that because I'm getting a bit it's almost looking like a brown dark now and it's a dark brown gray you'll see when I put it uh, back out into our piece here but that's fine because his um you know his fur is technically a brownie gray so but we'll we'll make it definitely gray by the time we get to our third stage and we start suggesting stuff. Now I'm just sort of, I'm looking around and I'm looking for little areas where there's really dark shadow and I'm just popping them in right now and it will help give me the form and dimension of this little guy. Um, he has a little bit of a leg that comes this way and then his foot comes almost straight out here. Oh my goodness, this is just so adorable. And again, I'm going to just work on the areas where there's the shadow right now. And I can come back in in a little bit. 
and suggest the light. I tend to leave the lightest lights and the darkest darks to the very last stage and it really makes everything pop out. In this stage, you know, like I said before, we're just concerned with making sure his details are in the right place. We don't want a third arm coming out of his head. We don't want a tail coming out of the side of his body. Um, I know that sounds funny, but you know, the proportions of your animals, I've been painting for, you know, 15 years and I painted a wolf pack and one wolf, <laughs> it went from a head this big to a body that was this big. It was like, what? I didn't realize, I didn't catch it until after I, s when you're sitting this close to a piece, it's really challenging to see some of those larger shapes and it's really easy to get them very, very, very wrong. <laughs> so what I like about this working with transparent colors. So that, that beautiful line we did with the tape, it's still gonna show through our first initial couple of layers um, simply because that paint is transparent and that's, that's how transparent paint works. It's wonderful to layer. So what I'm gonna do now, in the bottom here, he is all in shadow. Pretty much um, the only part in light is this area here and the top of his tail, which is wonderful. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull some of the darks here up into the light area on the fur on his belly. Um, and then I'll push some of it back down too to give it sort of that feeling of fur. Um, so now I'm getting that sense of fur without actually painting fur. I'm just pulling paint up and pushing paint down. And that may be all we need to do uh, in order to trick the eye that there's, there's fur going on down there. There's something fluffy happening. And uh, I'm trying to keep kind of the overall shape down here um, a little bit varied. So um, it, it's matching the reference photo as, as close to possible. I mean, we need him to be believable. But I'm, if he's off a little, it's not a big deal. The only person that's going to know it's going to be you. Well, maybe me. Because <laughs> we're both using the same reference. But unless you show me, you never know. Okay, so he's got another foot over here. I'm not going to worry about painting in a lot of the detail. I'm going to take the paint that I put down here already. I'm going to just kind of pull it down and suggest um, some toes. Uh, and they're quite long from my memory. They don't really look it in our, our, our painting here. And then the shadow gets quite dark uh, on the other side of his little paw. So what I'll do is I will suggest the shadow in here because this is an is a interesting um, color that we are working with. I'll soften that bottom up just by using my fingers. I'm just pulling the paint and go up here a little. And then he has this beautiful cast shadow that comes in this way. So with cast shadows, where they're being cast by an object and an object is person, place, or a thing. Um, the shadow is darkest where the object meets the shadow. So I just put a bit of water in my brush and I picked up all the extra paint on my palette and I plopped it in here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come back with just a wet brush and I'm just going to dribble the water down and off the upo here in this area and let the water do what it's gonna do. Um, I don't have a lot of detail on that foot. We can come back in probably with a really pale gray or a, or a dark gray, I should say, and just suggest the form of that foot there. So I like what's happening. Don't be worried. He's gonna be beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and mix some more of that dark. And again, that was my permanent uh, violet dark with ultramarine blue. I'm gonna put in Nickel Azo Gold, and I'm heavy on that. And as you can see, it warms it right up. And I'll put a bit of the Permanent Rose in, just because I can. The Permanent Rose makes it a bit more brown than purple. So, and I will be doing color theory videos. Color is such a wonderful thing to learn. Um, if you're impatient and can't wait for my videos, I would recommend getting any book by Stephen Quiller on color. He is an absolute color genius. I absolutely love his work and he ha he can explain it in such an easy format. Okay, see, we've got this lovely, lovely golden brown color. I'm going to just leave that line there. It just sort of suggests where his haunch, his back haunch is on the one side, but I am gonna break that, that line up just a little bit with our color shaper so it's not quite so samey, samey. And uh, I'm gonna come back up here. So his, his hind here, 
the hip, it sticks out. Basically what I want to find out is what feature in his face is that lined up with? And that way I can make sure that I've got his hip in relation to his head in the right spot to suggest how he's sitting and do it well. So if I hold my paintbrush straight up to my reference photo, keep that elbow locked, that hip is basically in line with the top of his snout. So again, I'm going to come in here and my snout, that hip should come down just a little. It should be more in this area. There. So, because I want my hip to be just about in line with the top of that snout, which it is. Once we, we start putting in the final detail and uh, get everything sized correctly, you know, that might, that little change right here may not seem cons or important now. But in the end, trust me, when you start having um, Godzilla sized body parts, <laughs> <laughs> you're going to notice and it'll be way harder to fix it and save all these wonderful accidents that we created in our first layer. So that's why um, in order to keep those, I tend to do all the repairs now to my proportions and value or not values, but to my proportions and placement. And then we go ahead and I, then I'm just looking at the dark shape that comes up behind his head that sort of denotes the back of him. And again, it comes up to the top of the ear. So I'm going to just take my finger and swipe because I want that a bit lighter. We see sun on his back. The what differentiates this ear from this area of the painting is that this is much darker than that is. So that's why I'm using my finger. I'm just sort of wiping that back. And then he's got these interesting little lines that kind of round him out and make him look like the rotund little thing that he is. I'll do that and I'm going to come back, pick up some more. And um, his tail has a lot of dark in this area. I'm going to just start laying in some dark. It's just the dark brown I've got. It won't be the final color that you see uh, by any means. And I got to mix a bit more up. Yeah, I tend to always uh, never mix a lot of paint together. And it works for me if you're the kind of person that mixes up tons, that's, that's fantastic. The only thing I would suggest is try to vary it every time you place it down on your piece so you don't have that one overall, um, you don't want something to look as if it appears far too much in far too great a volume. So our eyes get bored. That's why every time you put your brush in, when I mix my paint, it's always going to be a little bit off from what was there. And that's fine because it creates interest. Um, you know, the impressionists learned that and started applying that to all their, their, uh, their work. So there's a little bit of a darker line that comes up the outer edge of his tail before the white fluff. I'm going to suggest it up there and I'm going to come in with of course, my Christmas tree tool or my Christmas decoration tool. And I'm just going to do this because what will happen later, I can come in with some white and I can suggest or we can suggest the sunshine that is coming off or even the gray that's on his tail. In order for a white to show up, you need to have a dark down. And that's what I'm, I'm suggesting there. And uh, I can come in with my other color shape or two and suggest some larger strokes just so there's a bit of um, difference not uh, not quite all is similar with my Christmas tree tool now I'm gonna leave that open and I'll come in here with the same color and then what I'll do is I'll, I'll come down into the center of the tail back down towards where it's darker because it is really darkest in this area and then I will layer some more dark I'll just drop the dark in uh, down into this area here where the darkest spot is right here with this little guy. So now we've gone, my first gray was quite gray and now we're going to a brown. So I'm not, uh, I'm not too worried. It'll all get, by the time I get my third layer on, I'm either going to love it or hate it. And if I hate it, I'll just cover over it with another color. Because I'm the artist and I can do that. And you're the artist and you can do it. And I think one of my, you know, the more videos you watch of me, I don't really sweat anything. <laughs> 
Sometimes I do, but you know, for the most part, my, I find my paintings that are really successful are the ones that I just, I don't worry. I, I just have to trust that by the time I end up applying all the skills I've learned over the years to the piece I'm working on, that it'll be exactly as it was intended to be. I have a little, um, a little thing stuck underneath my reference photo here on my desk and it says, I don't know where this will end up, but today I'm going to work toward how I hope it will end up. And I will trust that it will end up exactly as it should. So I have that there to always remind me that, you know, don't try to control every part of this process. Let it, let it do what it's gonna do. The universe will hopefully provide. And again, I'm just going to use my color shaper. This color is a bit lighter. I didn't want it to be too dark. No, I didn't want it quite, quite as um, uh, filled in as this side and as dark as this side. And I think that that worked out pretty well. And I'm going to put, <laughs> I've got a hungry kitty behind me. I got to feed her her lunch. So I'm going to just do this. I'll pause the video for a moment. Feed Dottie because we don't want her jumping on the wet painting. I'm going to pull some of that wet paint up in the middle to suggest, um, to suggest movement in the, the tail, the way the fur would go. So there we go. So I'm going to just go and feed the pussy cats and I'll be right back and just hang in there with me. Okay, we have a happy cat. I am going to come in now. I want to, I, there's a lot of white and the lines are creating a lot of, not confusion for me, but visually they're annoying me right now. So I'm gonna come in with a, a very pale gray and I'm gonna start suggesting that lovely white tufted fur underneath and just in this area here, get a bit more definition. I'll bring some of it up along this part of the tail now that we've got some darker um, tones in there. And I think what I'll do I'm still deciding what I want to do with the head. <laughs> we'll get there. But um, I like where all my shapes, my proportions are all in. I like the shapes. Um, you know, he's he is the right size. All the important bits are there. Um, so I'm really happy with how that's working out. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mix a gray. I'm not going to make it warm like we did here. I'm going to leave it cooler, more like this color, and then I'll lighten it from there. So a nice cool gray. So predominantly we're going to do blues. And I think what I'll do is I'll use a bit of my manganese, which has um, a lot of yellow in it, but mixing it with the ultramarine will keep it a bit warmer. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add my permanent rose. I'll see if the permanent rose wants to play nicely with me today. And if it doesn't, I will end up using alizarin. Alizarin tends to be what I always use for my grays. So I'm just trying to switch it up. I've got the permanent uh, rose on my palette. So I will, um, you know, use what uh, the little bit that I have. Okay, so that's really quite um, blue. So I'm going to need to neutralize that a little bit. Um, and it, that basically just, I think I'll do it with some Napthal Middle Red. That might be too red for what I want, but I will check. Uh, let's see. We'll add some white in there and see what we get. Well, that's not bad. It's more of a light violet, which that, that works. I was kind of hoping for more of a light blue, but a light violet will do. <clears throat> and I think I want it just part of it a little lighter. So I'm just going to add the white into one end of it. So I'll have a lighter and a bit darker of the violet. And now I'm going to come back in here and just start suggesting the shapes where his little um, belly basically starts and covering up some of the darker tones that we have there. That's such a pretty color. I'm going to drop it behind this ear because we, it is a little lighter and I need to start adding a bit of round definition by mixing. Um, light and darker values back here so to create form. I will be putting a form video onto um, my website for you but 
in order to create any shape, it doesn't matter whether it's alive or it's a cube, an egg, you need to have light value, middle value, and dark value. You need to have three values. Without that, you, you'll never be able to make a shape. And that's what makes a very flat surface, a one-dimensional piece of paper, look like there's a three-dimensional object or being on it because you're creating form. You're not making a painting. You're creating form in its basic sense. And people who draw know that. But if you're not a drawer or you don't have any experience in a drawing class, um, that would elude you. So again, I'm just going in with my color shaper. I'm following the line like this would be his, um, the beginning of his belly here. There's a bit of a lighter kind of round shape here that I'm going to follow a little bit. In our reference photo, it's more brown than gray, but I'll start with the light gray just so we have um, some of the suggestion there. And two, one of the things that's nice, I don't want to isolate this tone or this value or this color just in that spot because then it will stick out. It will look very odd. So what I introduce in this area of the painting, I want to make sure that I put it in a couple of other areas so that, you know, it becomes believable. I can cover him there on his little foot and bring a little bit of that out. And I'm going to put just a wee bit along his line here. Now he has a lovely bunch of highlights in here. So this color is going to be just more of a transition between the darker line that comes from his eye to his snout and then the lighter line that we're going to add in later um, that will really highlight that this little baby's sitting in sunshine. Um, but for now, I'm just going to break that up a little bit with my color shaper and... Uh, I'll come down and add a little bit of it here again too. And again, it's just more of a transitional shade between a light light and a dark dark. It's uh, quite nice and it won't shock us. So right underneath his muzzle, he's got an area of shadow here. Now I put a bit of a darker color in when I was putting in the details. And that sort of gives us the space between his hands and his little bib area there and I think so let's just I'm going to add some kind of round flowing marks there because his little paw comes over and again in this area here okay and don't worry, we're going to come, I'm just trying to keep that overall shape on this side of his body consistent to what I'm seeing in his reference photo. You know, if you just said, well, that area on the reference photo is not that gray, that's right, it's not. We are going to come in later with a very pale light and we're going to highlight where the sun shines hitting him here and hitting him here. But for now, I just need to make sure that the, the side of his body here, the shape is correct. And again, the little bit of that lovely, this uh, kind of paley mauve purple that we made kind of comes up just a little around the side of his face and up into his shoulder area. And okay. And that also is helping to define the placement here of his little paws. And I just kind of just I'm spreading that with my finger and dissipating it up as I go. Um, nice. I think we can get away with, I'm going to go with a little bit of the darker purple now. Um, I had added white to that lower area, but I'm going to come in with the darker mauve and I'm going to come in right here from behind the ear and just start working my way down in those round. He's got lines of shadow that help make his head appear round and because they're in shadow and in shade you know this cool color purple being on the cool end of the color wheel um, it's a bit warmer than the blues but it helps make you your eye it tricks your eye and you see the coolness and you go oh cool it must be in shadow 
Now, if you're going to paint everything boiling hot, if I made him bright red, I would make his shadow cool. If I painted him bright blue, I would make his shadow warm. So you can always play with the dynamic. I just prefer doing cool shadows with animals because the animals that, you know, let's face it, are usually in the sun. They usually have that beautiful warm light reflecting off them. So I'm just trying to make a distinction between where the light here hits the dark of his shoulder. Um, just so I keep my, my positions correct and I'm just pulling up with my, sh my paint scraper. And some of those marks may persist right through to the end. Some of them might not. We don't know. I won't know. And this cheek here, I'm going to cover with the darker purple mixed with just a little brown, actually, that we already had on the palette. Um, no, you know what? I'm going to bring it in with a bit of the brown still, but I'll mix it with the lighter purple that I was using. And I'm getting kind of a, a mess of the purple. I just want to dull this cheek down because this cheek is just, it's, too bright. It's supposed to be on the shadow side as well of his face and uh, it was really distracting me so I'm just I'm just covering it up and again this he's got a little bit of a white just underneath his snout there and uh, it's in shadow as well so okay that's good, and I, I can pull some of this color in just up there to cover that little light spot there. And if you're really concerned, you know, um, we can do a few fur strokes here that show that the fur is moving up in between the eyes and around. I'm going to, I really like that kind of light pale color that was just mixed up between the light, that light mauve or purple we were using and adding a little bit of the brown. So I'm going to come in there and I'm going to, just because I have it on my palette, I'm going to just sort of suggest the upper area of his eye to differentiate between his eye lid area, eye brow area, and the actual um, membrane or, or eyeball itself. Oh. I just dunked my hand in paint. That happens quite a bit. Okay, so I'm just going to bring it around and I'll break it up with my color shaper. And again, I'm just kind of following the general shape of the eye. Again, the detail is not exact. This is just, I want to get overall sort of values now and fill in the larger shapes. I don't want my larger shapes struggling at this stage, once I get my proportions done, I just want to get those big shapes kind of filled in where I want them filled in. Now, I think what I want to do is extend this gray out a little um, from the piece, just because we have all these wonderful things here and these wonderful things here, and then we've got this beautiful tonal gray here. I feel like I need to bring that color a little out here and here, but I don't want to do the same thing that I did with that. Um, so I think I've got an old um, sponge that I've cut up, and uh, it, it's really old, and I'm just going to use it. I'll dab it into the paint, and uh, I'll just see if I can do something here that... I'll well, see now, I don't always do things I like. I don't really like that. So I'll just wipe it off while it's still wet. Maybe what I'll do, I said I wasn't going to do dots, but maybe I will. I do love dots. They just remind me of the seed beads that uh, that the Métis people use in their, their wonderful hand embellished um, pieces with seed beads. So what I'll do then is I, I'm just going to kind of come in and I'm going to introduce some of that gray randomly um, around some of these larger circles. And maybe what I'll do is I'll fill up a couple of them with the gray. And it's not so significant that it's going to jump out at you, but it will create harmony. And I'm just using the back of a color shaper. You could use the end of a Q-tip, uh, the back of the paintbrush for this. And they're all different sizes. I'm not too worried. This is more of getting, you know, continuing with that kind of playful theme. And then I think what I'll do is I'll bring some of that up as, oh, wrong end of my color shaper. <laughs> I'll bring some of that up, uh, up here as well. 
So we don't want to just isolate those dots that are down there. And maybe um, I'm getting low on the paint on my palette, so I... Uh, And it doesn't want to stick. No, oh, there we go. That's a good dot. Kind of looks like little buttons. <laughs> and then maybe I'll just do outside of this one. I want to be careful because I don't want to carry our eye off the piece and onto the painting next door. I think that's probably, I feel like I just need a little bit of something right there. So just because I'm worried that this line's so severe, it's just your eye's going to get caught in it and follow it and just go right off the paper. So I'm just going to do that. And then maybe I'll just uh, vary it a little. <laughs> there we go. So that's a block. It's just going to stop our eye because... Um, by covering this area of that line up here, it stopped the eye from going off. And once this, this facial portion's in, in even more detail, you, you're that, your eye will get held there anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. It was just being taken right off of the, um, the composition with that line. So I don't want, I don't want competition from here. That's, that's not what this painting's about. This playful aspect is just something that, you know, is for fun and just seeing what I can do. It's not the painting, so the squirrel is the painting. Um, I like what we've got done here so far. I'm going to let them dry for a few minutes, and then we'll come back in, and we'll start on stage three. It is a really gray day here today, so I had to just turn on some supplemental lighting, make sure that we can see our colors clearly and our values clearly. That's a, a good note um, to remember if you're painting you really ha need to have good light the best type of light is with no sunshine hitting your palette or your piece and that would be a northern window if you have one um, but I do use artificial lighting I use warm light bulbs though that replicate sunshine I uh, I'm not a big fan of cool light I like the, the warmth okay so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take some uh, of my ultramarine blue. I'm going to mix another gray and I'm going to start layering in some actual um, color, hopefully in the right, right values um, in the areas that need it. Now I need to introduce a bit of warmth so I'm going to mix up. Um, I have a bit of the brown that we used here so I'm going to take advantage of that and I'm going to fill the head in a little and then I'm going to supplement it with a gray as I move around so it's not the same everywhere. I'm just going ahead and I'm mixing some gray right now. Again I'm just using my permanent violet dark ultramarine blue a little bit of that permanent rose and then I'm going to bring some gold in nickel azo gold. Oh, that's a nice, that's really dark actually. I'm surprised at how saturated the color is in that. Nice, okay, good. And I'm just cleaning it out of my brush to keep it in the pile. So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna clean that out of my brush for now and I'm gonna start with this base brown that we have in this area. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to warm it up even a bit more and I'm going to add a bit of probably I'm going to try some Indian yellow to it and see I want it to be brighter but not brown but I don't want it red either um, simply because the the under color of this little guy is more of a yellowy brown so I like that that's not bad it's probably a bit on the green side but um, it will get covered up and what I'm going to do I'm going to wet that just a bit because I want a good coverage with it. I'm going to come in and I'm just going to put it in areas um, around his head where I see the warmth. And that kind of comes down into this area. So I'm kind of covering up that line, which is good. I found that a little distracting on his head. I probably won't tape lines like that again. I don't know. I can't promise, but... <laughs> I'll, I'll know whether or not I felt this was a success 
Again, I'm dropping some of that warm in on this ear. There's, um, there's a lovely glow coming through the ear, which I think that current, that little kind of purpley magenta may um, do for us. Uh, it will actually replicate that. So that's wonderful. I'll bring some of that warm in here. I think I don't, I've got that ear. It's not quite, I'm going to come in and correct it just because the ear, I've got the angle of that ear wrong and it's bugging me. It's more of a, that shape. So, you know, if you made a boo-boo, it's okay. We shall correct it. And I still managed to preserve some of that uh, color on the inside. It just, it's in the correct area now. And then I'm going to just drop a little bit of this color here because he's getting some reflected sunlight on the top of that ear. And by the time we come in and we add the, the light, light, uh, warm white, um, it will sit nicely on top of that. That will be a nice transition color for the warm white. And uh, my only concern with the ear is I want to preserve that, that inner pink there. So I actually will. I'll pull a little bit of that out a bit further, just using a wet brush, the bit of moisture on my brush. And all I did was lift that color off while it was still wet. And uh, that was pretty successful. And let's see here. That's good. Okay, so I'm going to go back to this, this uh, tone here that we've created. And I'm going to add a bit of the brown to it now and a bit of this dark gray and bring that, pull that down into the shadowed areas now. Um, what I'm going to do is use my mister, my spritzer actually, I'm just going to wet the top of his head a little and let this lovely transparent warm color mingle um, on top of this little guy's head. Rather than looking like, you know, I just went in and, and laid color everywhere. I'm just pulling it down to the top of his eye and uh, yeah, that's really, that's sweet. I like that. Okay, so I'm going to go in again. I added a bit of this dark to that lovely yellowy brown that we had. Um, and I'm going to start working down the side of his head now. And I want to allude. I'm, I'm basically, when I start putting details in, I always start by my center of interest, which, you know, is always going to be the face. So I'm coming in now and I'm going to be working on the area around the eyes, around the snout and in this general location. Cause to me, this is sort of our center of interest right here. And then of course we'll be traveling to other areas, but for now I will get, and that's quite a lovely, um, I do like that, that it's a lovely warm dark, which is quite, quite nice. It worked out well and there's two layers of dark here that I can define a bit better at the bottom of this ear as we develop the details and then we have a just a suggested darker line oh that's way too high actually it comes down closer to the middle of that ear where the light the light is hitting it and then it's dissipating into shadow and that's going to help me bring that area down into shadow. So basically I'm just warming up the gray right now and we will come in and we'll add more gray because um, he is a gray squirrel. <laughs> but we just have to kind of continue with this beautiful lovely warm to play off that cool gray. If we made the entire painting that cool gray, it, it would look artificial. Um, so we need to take the warm and the cool, and the cool and the warm are only as important as the cool and the warm around them. So we're just isolating them, making them more important. And all I did there was I just added a bit more of the dark gray to the brown in case uh, uh, you know you missed what I did. Um, and again, I'm, I'm highlighting the bigger shapes. And as I go, I'm deciding where I'm going to put that uh, darker brown in shadow where it's going to serve me the most good. And I think if we bring it down, cover up that white patch there, 
he has quite a darker shadow in this area. And then we've come around here and in there. Nice. I'm going to pull up along that that outer haunch because once we're we're close to getting done I don't I'm not going to paint everything around here I'm just going to make, make su some suggestions because we're only going to suggest most of the tail too um, like I really like what happened there in the middle so I'm probably just going to leave that my details focusing in here so I'm just doing the darks and trying to get them so they keep us sort of like a bullseye in this area and I think that actually um, that's a a composition style is the bullseye composition which I believe this little guy is going to be um, by the time we get him done um, so I'm gonna come back in and I'm just working on those shadows that suggest his shape right without those areas of dark shadow that make him look rotund he'd be a very flat looking squirrel and I'm gonna break my lines up so it still replicates fur and I might have to you know as this dries come back in and do this a couple of times in that spot and I'm going to come back in I'm wetting my brush just a little um, because it's not quite so um, it's a, a little lighter where I'm working now and when you you know dilute your paint with a bit of water it's a bit more transparent so I can get away with just suggesting the dark is there okay so does it look like a squirrel starting to come off the the paper yet so I really like what's going on here in his little head actually that's that's worked out quite well there's some interesting granulation happening between the Indian uh, the Indian yellow that I used and uh, the ultramarine blue so um, it's kind of separating and it's creating a lovely little texture on this little guy's head. I've got just a wet brush right now. It's really clean. I'm still using my one quarter inch flat and I'm going to take the, the water out of my brush so it's just damp. And I'm going to come in here rather than using a color shaper and I'm just going to pull some of those little areas where there's still sun hitting his head. I'm going to pull some of that color off just to reduce it a little. It's also uh, removing some of the granulation underneath, which is kind of like a happy accident. I'm really, really pleased with that. I'm going to introduce some of that color. I'm going to bring some more of my Indian yellow up to that brown. Mix what I have left there because I'm just going to pull some of that color. There's a bit of that lovely warmth coming through on the top of this hip. Um, right there and I'm gonna again just use my color shaper to pull it to push and pull it <clears throat> you know we'll tidy that up in a bit with our, our brush when we come in and do the final lights and darks but uh, that that looks good I'm just thinking there's a bit more warmth here in the tail because this is the Sun is coming in this way so it's highlighting sort of the transparency of the fur on this part of the tail so I like that and I think I just need to introduce a bit of it it seems a little isolated just to this side so I'm going to do just a smidge of it there just the ever so slightly and again that's going to help to break up this this line coming across and we do have some more darker darks coming in here which I'm hoping will um, I really don't like the line the way it's working out there but that's okay we're troubleshooting as we go that's part of the process so okay Definitely feeling like a little round squirrel. He reminds me of the little guy in uh, Ice Age. <laughs> oh, that poor squirrel. Okay, so I'm going to introduce some of the warm now into the dark down here, just where it comes up and around where it would be hitting the sun. Um, the Indian, Indian yellow is a, such a lovely warm warm yellow but you got to be careful. It is really a saturated color which means there's a lot of pigment in that hue and it stands out and again I'm just kind of I'm emphasizing the roundness of our little friend and I'm trying to think okay so just because I can I'm going to introduce just a little bit of that Indian yellow down in this area um, I just don't want it so isolated and a little bit along this little foot and maybe 
where was this foot? I've lost the foot in the detail, but that's okay. When I start adding darks in, I'll find it again. But I'm going to drop in just a bit of that yellow too there. Oh, nice. Okay. And I think I will pull some down. And again, wet brush, wet brush. I'm going to come in and just pull some of that down around his eye here. And... I will be coming back in and making that darker anyway with more of a gray color, but I think having the warm under it will help make the, uh, make the, even the, the side of him in shadow sing. But by the time I get over here and do the detail, um, it will feel much cooler. And he's got a lot of the, the warmth happening up here. I think it might be a bit much, so I'm just going to come in with my rag and I'm going to dab off some of that. Um, we're going to come over it anyway and lighten that up with a lot of the white because he is highlighted there in sunshine. So, um, no, he's good. So I am going to go ahead then. And I'm going to use a bit of white and that uh, dark gray that we made. I'm going to lighten it up a bit. I'm going to bring that in just underneath his little paws here. See if I can get that to arm to stand out a bit more. And nice. It is in shadow under here, and I find that having it, it was the same white as the paper, which is bright white, uh, was just kind of confusing me, so um, it does need to be filled in. And again, I'm just filling in the big shape there. I'll come back up, pick up some more of that, what's left on my uh, palette, and I can come in and, oh, I picked up a bit of red. <laughs> we don't want that. We don't want a bleeding squirrel. I'm just going to take that off and I'll clean my brush out. And uh, that's one thing with the fluid acrylics. They will um, wander on your palette if your palette's wet. So, And with the Stay Wet palette, of course, they, they tend to wander quite a bit. And I need to spritz it right now because we need our heat still on here in northern Canada or eastern central Canada. So the, uh, the artificial baseboard heating is drying my palette up as well as I paint. So... Need to be careful. Okay, so I'm going to come back in then. And uh, I kind of lost that lovely clean gray I was using. I'm going to mix everything on my palette together at this point and just see what kind of color I get. It can be a nice filler color in some cases to, um, to dab in, in different places to kind of create a color harmony in, in the piece, which if you see my red video, my red fox video, um, I had a very unattractive brown. Oh, I'm so sorry. My microphone cord got caught here. I had a really unattractive brown that um, came in really handy throughout the entire piece. I'll just make sure we got you centered. Okay, so I'm going to come back in and uh, start working closer to the eyes and see if I can get some of that detail in. So I'm gonna switch brushes. I'm gonna to go to a number two round, I think. Um, and I just got a new one in that I really, really like. It is Lang uh, Royal and Lang Nickel. And I got this from a company in Guelph called Stockade. And I got a set of them for like, I think it was $13.99. And there was um, four different size round brushes and a, a beautiful mop brush which is quite nice when you're initially laying your paint down. So if you've never seen Stockade's website, they're uh, designed for crafters um, and folk art. And uh, they basically have whew, anything you could want. So every once in a while, I do check them out. I'm going to make up another dark. And uh, I'm going to start in defining my area of center of interest around the eyes. And I'm not going to use my pink. I'm going to come in with my alizarin because I, I do want this to be a, a you know, um, a nice saturated dark. And again, I'm just adding ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson. 
and then I'm going to come in. I don't usually use my paint brushes to do this either because I find it just it creates wear and tear on them. And then I'm going to just add just a little dribble of nickel azo gold and then I'm going to test it on a on a piece of white card. Okay, still very purple. I'm going to come in add a bit more azo gold. What I'm trying to do is have it so it's not too way purple or not too warm. So Oh, that's better. It's still a little on the purpley side. I think a bit more gold and a bit of red, and I'll check it again. I like that. It's on the warm side, which I think for, you know, the squirrel, because his undertone is, is warm, we can get away with that. So I'm just going to puddle that. It's easier to pick up on paint brushes rather than having it all spread out on the palette. Um, that's the one thing when you work on a palette that's wet, your paint will disperse. And the paper, it doesn't really soak the paint up, but it's uh, easy to not get enough on your brush if the paper is fighting you for it. So that's why you see me scraping the paint into puddles. I just find it easier to, um, to pick up on my brushes. So again, using my number two round, I'm going to come in and I'm going to start working around my eyes and I'm going to start suggesting some of the areas of dark in the areas that I basically see them in. And This, this is always the fun stage when you start doing the uh, values and the details because this is when those, those little features just start kind of popping out at you. And uh, it may not have looked like much, but once you start working on this stage, it's like, oh my goodness, look at that developing. <laughs> uh, that comes all the way down to his little snout just about. And uh, I try to be a little light-handed because I'd rather come back in and do this a couple of times if I need to as opposed to um, coming in way too heavy in the initial layering and then saying, oh, darn, now i gotta, I got to go so scrape some of that off. Um, oh, I think I got, that should be there. <laughs> I had that a little too low. That should be where there's a layer of white. So I just used my finger to wipe that back and I'll come back in. I'll try that again. So he's got, it's kind of like a dark line here, followed by a grayish white, followed by a dark line from the snout up and then a white line and then that warm, beautiful sunlit fur. <laughs> so what I'm looking at now is just sort of shapes and direction and uh, not so much body parts. I don't want to name them like body parts because that's not what I'm painting. I am painting shapes of different value beside other shapes of different value. And, uh, you know, I know his snout's his snout and his eyes are his eyes, but other than that, it's just shapes. And I'm gonna come in on the end of his snout here. Oh, pardon me, I'm just gonna see my phone and I'll be right back. Okay, I gotta love cell phones, you know. It was telling me that's a potential fraud caller, so I didn't have to answer it. I'm going to go back in. We're still doing that detail around his eyes and his... Oh, I really put my hand in the paint this time. I'm not used to working with my palette so close to my piece, and I'm just doing it so the video... <laughs> um, hopefully will give you enough details um, of what I'm painting. So, wow. I'm very, very yellow now. I'll try not to do that again. Um, I like <laughs> diary lied yellow. It's beautiful. It's, um, I don't want to waste it on my own hand, though. I'll come back in, and I'm going to um, re-suggest that dark on that ear closest to the sun. And again, I'm not painting the, that entire area with it, um, simply because I really think in the reference photo it's a bit lighter up the middle of his ear. So I'm just going to use my color shaper. It actually did not do quite what I was hoping. So I'm gonna get a Q-tip, my handy dandy Q-tips. Who knew? I don't think Q-tip knew when they made them. What a great painting tool they were making. Okay, perfect, that's what I wanted. I just wanted a bit of a highlight going up the middle of the back of the ear. I don't want it too significant because it is in shadow, but I'm gonna bring that down this way. I think my angle's a bit too severe on that. There. 
And I, we still have to kind of highlight that as well. There. Okay. I think. And there seems to be an impression of a line just sort of in that area. Good enough. And the shadow comes down this way just a bit to give it just the we that is what tells us that this is a different value than this is is that little tiny that little tiny uh, one eighth of an inch area right there is somewhat important. I'm just making fur like strokes with my brush and then there's a lovely shadow behind this ear which because it looks like the sun is almost directly above this little guy. Shadows right there. <clears throat> I'm going to come over here now because we suggested the darks on there. I'm going to come in and I'm going to suggest the darks on this side actually. And I'm going to use a bit of a bluer dark because it is opposite the light. And I'm going to come up. I'll start on this side first. And there was quite a, a, a light value there. So... Um, and then there's the fold here at the front that goes back this way. And I'm not going to paint the line right up. I'll just use some dabs. Um, and bring that down this way. And, oh, okay, so that's given some shape and definition up there to the top of this little guy's head. I'll use my color shaper just to pull the paint in. Suggest some texture there that doesn't have to be fur, but just so we know that there's something going on there, and our eyes will make up the rest, and our brain will make up the rest. Bring that here. Again, suggest something that is somewhat fur-like in this area, just coming around the ear. I left a little space between the dark I painted and this dark here. We are going to come in with a, a pale white and that will make that just pop out right there. Um, but we'll do that closer to the end when we do our lightest lights and darkest darks. I'm going to do some things that look like fur now right there. And again, if your paintbrush strokes that are supposed to look like fur aren't happy to you, then just use your color shaper. It makes wonderful fur-like strokes, right? So I just love what you can accomplish with those guys. Um, and if you don't have a color shaper, you can use a toothpick. You can cut an eraser um, into a shape. Anything in silicone or rubber. Um, this old uh, guy here, you could use something like this. Now this came from a Benjamin Moore dealer. It was for faux um, furniture painting to make wood grain. So not everything you need has to come from a, a art supply store, you know, be inventive. I'm sure you can get some silicone tools for the kitchen that uh, spatulas and stuff that would just uh, do a good job. Okay, so I'm just putting in the darks here around this little ear here and here. And I'll come in more fur like strokes in there. It kind of comes down this way. And again, we're just building layer upon layer. And each layer will give us a bit more detail. Using my color shaper, breaking those lines up. We don't want solid, solid lines. They're, they're very boring. Solid lines aren't, and they don't represent fur or to any type of texture. So just man-made objects have solid lines. I'm going to come in now and suggest my eyeball. I want to make sure, and what I'm looking at is just getting the shape of it right. I know it's not, I'm not painting an eyeball at the moment. I'm just, I'm painting. I want to make sure it's relatively flat where it's supposed to be flat at the top is slightly curved towards the front where it comes down towards the ground. And the back is Actually, it's quite pretty. It's more elliptical towards the back. 
and then it comes down here it's quite wide in the it's sort of right in the center and then comes up nice so I think that's a really good shape so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just fill this in with a bit of color because we know his eyes round right now there's always always usually a tear duct even on animals you know it's not just people so I don't have to fill in that whole area with the black if I leave some gray towards the rear and towards the front it's going to be completely believable I can even suggest um, lid lines and uh, water lines below at the bottom and you know don't I, I think that's where people go wrong painting animals eyes they think of it as an eye like this big round orb and they want to paint everything round and you know what it reflects things that are not round into the eye um, you know the sky is reflected in it whatever object that little guy is on is going to be reflected in it um, it's just it's anything but so and that color scraper just did a lovely job of suggesting a water line at the back I'm going to leave that because um, we are going to layer on top of that as well we'll do the catch light um, I am going to come back here to this eye now and I'll it needs a bit of defining it's I'm going to use my fingernail I'm just going to scrape back to where I think the eye actually comes out to that eye I made is quite large compared to our reference photo and uh, there is no fur past that eyeball that I can see so and this will help um, make that eye lovely and round and believable so just by scraping away that extra paint um, it really helped now he has a little divot where it goes in I'm just going to use just white paint right here and that even helps to make the eye even more three-dimensional having it like that so and then again don't sweat it because we are going to come back in a couple of times and we're going to work on these guys and I'm just using that white I had and going around it again um, until I feel I got basically what I'm seeing in my reference photo that's good enough I'm going to leave that for now and then uh, he has an eyelid there too which I kind of painted over with a dark color so I'm gonna I'm gonna take a bit of white I'm gonna add it to that gray that's on our palette already that when I mixed all the palette colors together uh, that were left I'm just gonna mix it with some white I'm gonna come right in over that dark because that's that dark there is throwing me off because he does have a lid in this area and it kind of comes up here like that so we don't really see a lot of dark there and that was bugging me so I'm going to just use my color shaper to smooth that out a little um, so it doesn't look quite so same samey I know that's not a thing but consistent I guess we don't want it to look so consistent and again just coming in with my color shaper breaking that line up and we are going to come back in and add more like I said more subsequent layers on top of those eyes they're not the darkest dark and lightest light they could be at the moment you know we're, we're suggesting detail where it's in, in, important right now for the center of interest and this stage helps us um, you know before we put on our lightest lights and darkest darks it helps us figure out where we can improve in the composition to, to move our eye around and I'm just going to work on um, defining from the eye down to that little tip of his snout here and there is a little bit of a lighter color coming in there and I've lost the dark there is a darker line in there which I've lost but that's okay I'll get it back I can just do that really quickly with the dark that we've got mixed up it's wet so it may make a, a bit of a, a darker gray but that's okay I just don't want to lose that forget that I've got that little bit of dark here it's important for creating shape on that side of the body even though 
you know, at this stage, it's hard to, <laughs> it's hard to see. And then again, a bit more dark just underneath, suggesting the top of that little haunch at the back. And that goes right down pretty much. We can use a bit of dark there um, to highlight. So his hand or paw on this side has a beautiful highlight. And I think I can get away with just painting negatively in behind it. Um, like that. And that helped pop that hand out. We will come in and, and do our lighter lights and darkest darks there as well. And again, the farther we get away from this center of interest, the less the detail needs to be. It doesn't have to be 100%. So um, I think I'll probably end up doing a troubleshooting video when working from photographs um, or at least a download on the website, on my website that you can see. Because um, there's some certain things that on every photo um, you can look out for and you can improve when you're painting. So coming in with just a really blue gray right now and because uh, I'm starting to see blue <laughs> here <laughs> I'm not sure why it's looking blue now um, but I thought I'll go ahead and, and add that blue gray in in the certain areas it may help pop some stuff out and help us define some shape underneath his chin and muzzle and his snout he is a little cutie though my goodness and I'm going to come in really wet now and pick that up with a lot of water on my brush. And I'm going to drop it in behind these darker lines or maybe right up to that darker line that we made a little earlier. And help to highlight that roundness. And uh, because I have a lot of water in there, it's going to be transparent and we're still going to see that warmth coming right through it. No. Nope. A little bit of fluff. I'll pick that up. Again, I just want a really wet brush. I'm going to come in here behind the eye. This is just all leading up into that eye, filling in that detail right behind the eye. And okay. Nice. I think I'm going to bring a little bit of that gray up just above the, um, just above his eye here at the brow at the back. He has a bit of that. It looks coming there and there. And I'm just seeing for opportunities where I can just use what I've got on my palette. And, you know, he is a gray squirrel, not a yellow squirrel. So I got to start dropping grays in or he will be orange yellow. <laughs> Which, you know, would be fine. I'm the artist. I can make them whatever I want. But um, I do like to represent our creatures as they were made. Because that's, you know, what made me fall in love with them. So I'll bring some in. It's, it's a, the gray is a lovely transition color between the dark and the light as well. And that's, I'm just looking for opportunities to place it in areas between where we're going to come in with very, very light white paint and really dark, dark paint. So it helps create dimension and form and depth. So we'll have a light and the middle will be the gray and the dark will be a darker dark. This, this is nice right now indicating where our center of interest is, but that's not, um, that's not what's going to be our darkest dark yet. We're still building. There's lots of opportunity to come in uh, with even more dark and, and darker. And I'm laying some of this gray that I really like that blue gray. I'm going to make a bit more of that up. It was just the dark I had on my palette with ultramarine blue. And then I just added a bit of our titanium white into it. And there. I'm dropping it right into our areas in shadow at the back. And it's just going right over top of that warm color. And it's making him pop out quite a bit. And I'll just use my color shaper here, suggest some fur. I'm not gonna try and fill them all in right at the moment. Um,
just coming in to see where I can utilize him. Now I'm going to do the line of it along the outer edge of the fur because you see on the reference photo there's an edge of darker fur where the light and the dark meet and uh, or his fur and the light meet there it, the fur appears to have a darker edge so I'm going to just put dab the paint along that outer edge and pull it back into the body of the fur and that gives us the illusion this is going to dry kind of in a darker solid line and give us the illusion of what we're seeing in the photograph and I'm going to continue that down to what we're basically seeing here down to where his his little feetsy his footsie is and then again I'm going to pull that back up into the painting as opposed to pulling it out At this stage anyway and then uh, let's see he has that foot is behind this this ear I'm looking at where the this foot is in relation to the placement of the ear and the whole thing in its entirety sits behind that ear so I'm gonna go ahead and I'll just uh, do some marks that suggest that there's a foot coming out of there I gotta come in. We're gonna we're gonna rework those shadows down there as well. So I'm just suggesting right now. I'm not painting anything important. Just m suggesting some shapes that might be foot like for a squirrel. Yeah, I think I'll add that up to this area too because his other little foot and that way there's consistency there and our eye will say, oh, I've seen that before. Oh yeah, I saw it over here. So now it's repeating here. Well, that makes sense because this is another foot. Um, you know, that's kind of how our minds, our minds work that way. And I'm just looking at the opportunity in the shadow areas to introduce that blue in the areas that I already kind of did with the darker color earlier just to sort of... Um, indicate the areas of shadow so I like that I'll pull that up now I really do like that blue I think what I'll do uh, with a really wet brush I'll go back to my half or quarter inch flat right now and I'm going to make it a little wet and I'm just going to float. And I call this floating because I'm not really going to make any specific marks. It's just I want to put this darker color here against the line where his belly, um, the white of his belly meets the dark of the body. And I'm going to float that and then we're going to pull some of that down with a color shaper while it's wet into the fur below. And hopefully that will um, make it look like a nice uh, gradation in in his fur is, is sort of what I'm going for so it's not all the same consistency okay so now I think what we'll do is we'll use the color shaper again I have a new one but I don't know where I put it I wanted to play with it I isn't that silly and I can't even figure out what I what I did with it oh well another day um, and again, so I'm going to come in with my color shaper and I'm getting this lovely um, puddling. It's very uh, organic. And I'm just suggesting through the wet paint, the direction of the fur and the body of the squirrel. Nice. So I'm going to clean that out of my brush. That worked out exactly as I was hoping. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to pick up some of that and I'm going to just float it. I think there's an opportunity just right here and around the side behind his eyes in this area. I want that quite, uh, and maybe right here. Because we've got quite a bit of shadow here too on this side of his face and on this side of his nose and muzzle. And then I don't want it so isolated. I'm going to come in with a lot of water. And I can suggest that because now that's very wet. I'll just dab some of that along the top of his head. Let it dry where it wants to dry. 
and that will make us oh yeah there's there's that color there too so he must be gray because we see it sort of everywhere throughout his his body so nice and I think we could drop some of that in I'm just going to make a bit more of that up it was just ultramarine blue with the dark that we'd mixed a while ago and then add a bit of uh, titanium white to that and I want to take this opportunity now to uh, drop that into the tail really wetly you know we just we want it to dry wherever it's going to dry we can we can flick if you want add lots of water and flick I mean it's a squirrel's tail <laughs> um, you know he's probably standing on a sidewalk or maybe pavement hard to say it's not going to be on green grass that's all I know and so I like I'm going to add lots of flicks in there and up and around his tail and then we'll drop I've still lots of water in there and I'm going to drop there seems to be uh, kind of like a gray vein of color that kind of goes up the middle of his tail that mixes in with the dark here a little up here and maybe just a touch in these areas in between the warmth and the, the the beautiful light and some I'm gonna drop some more back in this area here here just gonna take advantage to put it where I can while I have it on my palette and lots of water it's really wet because um, that's you know I just I love how it looks the process of it and uh, I'm gonna drop some in this area because in order for the light to really shine when we get to adding in the lightest lights we're gonna need some of that to um, that line's still driving me crazy so I'm just gonna paint that and meet it up with the squirrel <laughs> um, there not sure maybe uh, I don't know not sure what to do with it it's still very significant to my head so we will deal with it I promise you I always figure out what to do sometimes it might take me I had one painting of a doe and I had to sit it aside for three four months and just look at it every day I just couldn't figure out what to do and finally um, finally I did it was for a solo exhibition I was doing I was so happy once I did and it, it was exactly what I needed to do okay I'm dropping it just on the top of the head here we're still gonna come in and suggest the lightest lights and darkest darks and more more um, brush strokes and I'm just sort of covering everything but maybe down here in the belly part um, okay <laughs> I'm going crazy with this color I just love it I can't help it okay and maybe what I'll do now I'm gonna put some of it here in his shadow and I'll use my spritzer and that way we'll have sort of a reflection of what's going on here in the tail um, happening a little farther south and it'll kind of mirror itself too so that that would be nice you know it's not so isolated up in the tail because that's a really that's a lovely effect going on up there yeah, so nice and wet we'll come in and just I'm gonna and again I'm not making solid consistent lines I am basically looking for opportunities to just drop the paint in let it puddle I'll give it a spritz and I'm just following the reference photo for where his shadow is coming I'm trying to stay away from the area where his little footy will come in and we can darken that shadow up uh, as it's a far, like closer to him but see how that's nice it's kind of mirroring what's going on up in the tail and it doesn't feel so isolated up there now and we've got that sort of loose feeling so I'll just let that dry I was going to spritz it but no I like what's happening so um, I think I'll, I'll just put a little bit more there and then uh, we'll be done with that and then I'll start working on some details in his snout yeah he's got quite a a 
bit of it showing up there where the darks are. There. Oh, you're such an adorable little thing. Okay, so if I like what's happening with my dribbles, I could use my color shaper or a toothpick and pull a few pieces in and out. I may. No, I don't want to overdo it because I really like the dribbles. <laughs> They're lovely. And I'm getting a, the paint is, is um, um, granulating where the pigments are separating a little and I'm getting little puddles that are pink on one side and a little more blue on the other. Okay, so his detail is still really dark in here, which is fine because we're going to come in and we're going to start popping that out. And I really like where some of these areas are, are singing through right from our very first layer. And I'm okay with that. That's what keeps the, the work exciting as we build up the layers. Some things will stay, some things will go. Um, I never know. Um, I just troubleshoot as I build up what I'm doing and see what's what's what. So I'm going to let him dry for a little bit and we'll be, I'll be right back. Okay, so this piece in the middle of his head is really, really bothering me. So I know I need to work on the details here. So I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll work on bringing up the value and details in the snout, the hands, and the eyes, and try to minimize that uh, racing stripe that ended up right in the middle of this little guy's forehead. So I will use my number two. <clears throat> Laying nickel round. Um, and I think I need to mix up just a bit more dark here. I'll do a nice pure dark. So I want uh, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue in pretty much equal portions. A little tiny bit of azo gold. Now if you don't have gold, just make an orange. Blue and orange are opposites on the color wheel. So um, instead of going blue with your alizarin crimson, go um, alizarin crimson with a yellow make a nice orange and then mix in your ultramarine blue until you get a nice a nice neutral dark so i'm going to come in now i'm going to actually uh, increase the size of my reference photo just so i get a bit more detail um, around his eyes here i'll start with kind of the shape of his upper eyelid and and again i'm not painting like I don't want a full line right around his eye that looks really, um, which I, but I just painted one. <laughs> uh, I didn't want it to look uh, contrived, you know. Um, so there, that helped a little. I just broke that front line up a little. And then his, he's got a little bit of a black line on the outside of the water line. And I'm just going to leave that quite like that for now. And I'm going to come in and do the dark on the ear again. Re-establish re that. And again, I'm not really adding any water onto my brush right now because I want those darks in these specific areas to really kind of to pop out and sing. So this is pure pigment, pure paint on my brush. Now I'm just dabbing just instead of painting a line, I'm just painting a couple of dots. Uh, will help the eye travel up and around. And then, don't forget we are gonna come back in with our lights as well. Nice. 
And all of a sudden that ear is uh, gaining a little bit of depth. And that is quite wide. Here we go. A little ear in shadow. Now he does have a bit of a, a line at the top of his eye, upper eye. I would say lid. It's not a standard or traditional lid like what we have, but it would be a lid. And then the dark comes into the corner. So it's the little details, you know. If you can include them in your piece. It just, I mean, we've been seeing squirrels our whole lives. If you live in North America, we're in a continent that actually has, you know, squirrels. And uh, subconsciously, our mind, even though if you sat down and try and drew one without a reference, some people could. Um, I might be able to make something that sort of resembles a squirrel or a chipmunk. But the funny thing is, is we'd know exactly if we were looking at something and it was wrong. Um, just because of that accumulated visual knowledge. And again, I'm just highlighting the dark portions um, around the eyes, breaking it up if my line's a little too thick. Um, you know, we're starting to develop. This is the stage where that three-dimensional development of form comes in, where we're, we're layering our, our darks and our lights, and we're getting um, that lovely... Um, contrast and values and that contrast and values is what gives our our little shapes form okay I'm gonna come behind this ear now and I'll pull some of that in yeah, and in this stage, I don't use my color shapers as much. I tend to use my paintbrush to define. I like the color shaper for the surprise. You get lots of energy. It keeps me loose in my painting. Um, nothing really gets overly tight with um, when I'm painting with them. Where is with a two, you know, a paintbrush, it gets really easy to, to overpaint and and become really. Um, oop, oop, oop. I have to leave that. It's a little wet, so it wants to get pulled up in my brush. <coughs> I think actually, the shadow is just a bit bigger too. There. Okay, so we're getting some shape to the ears now. I'm going to come down, and so we lost the snout a while ago, so I'm going to come back, back down into the snout now, and I will and this is again just using a relatively dry brush, um, not a lot of water. coming in and suggesting. I'm going to pull some of that dark just kind of over. There are little tiny shadows in the sunlit portion of his snout. And uh, of course, you know, we don't need to paint them exactly as we see them <laughs> but I think in areas where it is our center of interest the closer we get to having the detail correct the more our eyes will register oh look at that cute little squirrel you know he's in bright bright sun it's just that little bit of visual help oh he's got such cute little whiskers Okay, 
going to darken that up just in here. That kind of comes around the bottom edge of the nose and the snout. I have a habit of, you'll notice watching my videos of calling <laughs> their parts the same as our parts, even though it's a snout and not a nose. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to forgive me. If not, oh well. I love you anyway. Okay. Again, I'm starting to see a bit more of that uh, shape developing. Just come in and I just want to make sure that I got the shape correct on the edge of that nose, the edge of the snout here. And then that we do have a little bit of a He's a smiley squirrel. He's a happy little guy. I will use my color shaper to come in and just sort of take the edge off of that. Yeah, look how lovely these blotches turned out. And it just kind of made, oop, made a bit of consistency between the tail, what we did up there, and the ground here. So, and it can suggest anything. But I think, we'll see, I don't know. We'll keep working on the squirrel, but I may just get rid of these accents I put in earlier. I'm not sure if I like them or not. Um, we do have some um, whiskers coming out, so I'm going to take um, a gray right now, just with whatever's mixed on our palette. Uh, and I'm going to suggest those little whiskers, and then I'll come back in at the towards the end and finalize them by doing dark and light. It's got some really pale ones coming off here. Oh, he's such a cutie. Let's see. So I'm just trying to get a sense of value on the shadow side of his face right now. He's got a bit of... I'm going to use my color shaper and I'm going to pull that gray up and around the edge of his nose. There. And this needs a bit, I think I kind of cut off the corner, so I'm just adding a bit more paint here. His nose was taking on an odd shape there to me. That's better. And I'm going to keep that on my brush. Uh, you know what? I'm going to wet it though, and I'm going to come in and pull that up. He's got sort of this area in here. Not a lot going on. It's in shadow. There's not a ton of detail on our reference photo. So um, rather than trying to paint detail that doesn't exist, I'm just going to lay water in there with some pigment and let it paint itself. <laughs> and then I don't have to worry about it. My only concern is that this value basically needs to be correct. So it needs to be the right amount of light, the right amount of dark, to suggest that this side of his face, yes, is in shadow. And I don't have to stress about making the right marks. I'm letting um, the surprise and, and, and the, fluid, the fluidity of my medium determine what these final marks are going are gonna to look like. I just want to make sure they're in the area that they're supposed to be in. And I still have an opportunity to come in and, and lighten that up a little there. But I want to build this area up around his hands or his paws. And uh, silly little squirrel. Silly little squirrel. Now there's a bit of a light kind of coming around here. I have an opportunity to um, brighten that up in a bit. And again. Hmm. There's a bit of a, I don't want to say there's an edge here, but in order for that darker edge to kind of stand out, I need to make the section that abuts it a bit lighter than that value or it won't read properly, um, which is what I was just doing. 
I'll just bring some of this. I'm going to bringing some of this gray up into the face in areas where, um, you know, I I have the opportunity to, to do that, and that will help the believability of this little guy being a gray squirrel as well, because it's a it's a really nice gray. I'm not going to do too much work on this outer edge. Um, only because, you know, the sun is, is hitting it and we're going to come back in with real, real light lights. But in some areas, a few gray marks is going to help um, as a transition color. So we're not going from black to, to white, basically. So, and again, I'm just kind of keeping in mind brush strokes that are sort of synonymous with what, brush, what fur would look like. Now, if I, if I do... If, if I come in with a heavy hand and I'm not happy with the strokes that I'm making, I will by all means use whatever tools I have to, to pull the paint around until I have something I, I really like. So the top of his eye has a brighter part here that sort of comes in and, and a bit of a flat spot there. I lost that little bit of dark. And a little bit there. And acrylics will always dry darker. So as I'm working on areas and other areas are drying, I go back to look at it and go, oh, that does not look how I wanted it to look. And, uh, you know, luckily enough, though, I know my process is, is very heavily dependent on layering. So um, I can come back in at a later layering and uh, make it look exactly like what I'm, I'm hoping it will look like. So I'm going to just do the outer edge of this part of the ear with this light gray. It's not going to reflect sun, but there is a bit of a reflection off of it that separates the dark from this lovely interior glow that we have. And I'm going to bring in some of the gray here just to, to transition between, and I'm going to dab it off with my finger, <laughs> just to kind of transition between this dark of the outer, outer edge of the ear and that lovely little pink glow that we have. I don't want it going from a nice soft transition to a hard line. Um, I want it kind of modeled the way it would glow. And that, uh, oh, that worked out pretty good. So I like that. Come back in with a bit more white. I'm just using the color that was already, when I mixed all the colors together on the palette, I got that uh, kind of neutral gray and I'm just working with that for now. Um, I'm gonna add just a bit of, do I wanna add manganese blue? No, no, I'll add more French ultramarine. I just want this bit on the blue side. It's gonna be a lighter value. I'm lightening this up just to kind of highlight some of the lighter areas of the gray fur. I'll see if this is the right color. It may not be. Uh, no, that looks, that looks pretty good. I'll leave that. Um, just kind of highlighting tufts around the ears. I don't have to suggest a lot of them, um, but where the fur hits the shadows, it's kind of nice to, to give that, oh, look, there's that real dark and then there's this lovely lovely little um, area of coolness for our eyes to rest. And I'm going to bring that down. So there's a bit going on in between. There's kind of like two dark little patches un underneath his ear. And I don't want them to look like two dark lines, but that's, in, you know, in essence, really what they are. <laughs> I'm not sure. There must be wrinkles or folds or in the fur the way the, the camera caught the, um, the image. And, uh, you know, again, I put it on and then I dab my finger on it to take some of it off because I can always put more on if I find I come in and put too much on. And so I'm going to come back in over this part of the eye and make this a bit more pronounced there as it seems to be on the reference photo. There's something kind of, I think it might be a whisker in that bottom part of the eye. Okay, so I'm starting to see the face of a squirrel now. I'll come in and do kind of the bottom part of that eye there. Up. Uh, 
think I'll dab some of that off. I'm going to come in with the white white there so it's not going to be so critical. It'll be fairly light once we're... He just got some kind of grayish, bright grayish details going on here. I'll suggest them and then dab them away. And there's some little pieces of fur coming over that darker patch there. And then his whiskers are coming over the darker patch. Um, and I'm going to bring some of this back in here. It's just a nice pale color. And then I'll dab it off of the warm area there. So the gray is introduced into this warm um, yellowy area, but you can still read the gray in there. It could be just the reflection of the sun coming and, and after uh, hitting him, it's just reflecting there. Um, I'm going to do a, a bit of the light gray just along this little line on his muzzle. We will come back in and do some brighter pops that'll pull out the sunshine. But right now I'm not I'm not worried about pulling out sunshine. I'm just I'm my concern right now is making sure you can tell the difference between a snout, a head and a torso and the ears. They're all in the right spot, but now I've got to build up these values. And I'm going to bring in a bit of this gray at the towards the the pad of the nose, the snout, and uh, give it sort of fur shapes. He's got some. Now, because I had a dark in there earlier, I can come in and, and, and just do a few kind of fur shaped um, marks, and it will be believable. Uh, this is going to go this way. Okay, so I need to warm that up a little. Uh, I'll go back into my Azo Gold, which is just a lovely warm. And I'm going to mix just a bit of that gray we've had on the palette and just a little dribble of white. And I'm even going to wipe some of that wipe off my brush. And then I'll come back in. Um, there's just a little area on the snout. And I want to make sure I, I, right here to the side, it's lighter and then darker. And then gray underneath. So I really want to kind of be able to highlight that. I think that will help give that little little snout a bit of form. And I think actually I might have made his snout a bit too thin. So I'm going to fatten it up just a little bit. I'm going to bring a line down here. I've lost the edge on that side of the snout. So I think if I bring it that way, that's a bit better. And then a little, a little more this way. Coming in with the dark on my dirty brush. It still had that yellow in it, so it's not quite so dark. Um, but I think that's a bit better. I think his nose was just a little. I lost the bottom edge of it somewhere in there, layering the white in. And I'm going to come back in. I cleaned my brush off, coming back in with this gray. I'm going to darken it just a smidge. I don't want it that really light blue. And then I'm going to come in and um, just underneath the muzzle here, I think I'll just define a bit of the top of the mouth a bit better. Oh, it actually can be a bit paler. There. So that goes, now see, I think that goes kind of from close to this end of the snout down. I think I had the mouth kind of in the wrong area. But that's why, you know, when we start painting the details in, if anything is off, we're going to figure it out because this is where we want things to start looking like um, what they are. Okay, now I'm going to suggest we do have a bit of uh, highlights on this side of the snout. So I'm just going to suggest them now, but we will we'll brighten them up in a bit with um, with a lighter lighter value. But I just want to get that depth and definition to the nose, to the snout. I'm going to come in with my color shaper and just this line at the bottom of his snout is just a little too long. So I'm just just pulling a little bit of the paint back and away. There. 
and it's it is drying darker uh, than what I thought so I have opportunity to come in and, and and you know bring that out just a bit more which is good I don't mind uh, come in here and in so we do we've got that little lip that comes down here to the middle of his nose and then this way And then there's a bit of detail in here. And then... Okay. Uh, let's see. I'll bring that. That value is quite nice. I'm going to pick it up with a wet brush and I'm going to introduce it. This is still a little wet from my earlier where I floated that, that color in earlier on the cheek. But there is a lighter area here as we get out from under the shadow of his face so I'm going to start by just floating some of that paint in probably could have used a, a larger brush but oh well and uh, I'm gonna have to come in with a darker oh wait what have I done and I just realized I've lost his arm <laughs> somewhere in here I've his hand is here and then the edge to his arm but his arm should come down like this <laughs> Well, that would explain why he's just not looking right to me. See, even I do this kind of thing. So what I'm going to do, I'll come in with my dark. That arm's fairly important. I don't want a floating hand on the front of a squirrel. He's the creepy squirrel with the weird floating hand. No! Um, okay, so the hand comes about like there. And I'm just using my dark that's mixed there because it is, uh, you know, his, his arm is relatively dark where it meets the shoulder so well this will just make him look right now couldn't figure out what was wrong why didn't you guys tell me i missed his arm <laughs> all this talk about getting his proportions in the right place and i missed an arm a whole arm so i'm just gonna i'm just sort of going by what i'm seeing and his belly got a little smaller but that's okay he can be a bit thinner than what I thought. Okay, now I will fill that in with just some water and that, that lovely dark gray we were using um, just to give that arm some definition now. And then uh, once it starts to dry, the water will just go where it wants and I'll be able to suggest some other stuff. i got some fluff on there. And this is actually really good because now I understand that this value here still is not quite light enough and that's good because we're going to build this up as we go so I think I'm going to mix up some more darks but I'm not going to use my new paintbrush I will use my uh, palette knife and I'm going to put a bit of ultramarine blue a lizard and crimson and gold, nickel azo gold. Remember, you can find my palette colors on my website under free lessons. There's lots of downloadable stuff there. I'm adding stuff to it all the time as I um, as I do videos. I recognize that oh, maybe you guys need some information on this, and uh, so hopefully I got you covered. Okay, so I think that arm looks okay. Well, that helps. Now, now that looks like a, a squirrel. <laughs> Instead of a squirrel head floating on a weird body. I'm going to just come and drop a bit more dark here because there is that little dark line that goes up and suggests some of that um, shape. And I do have that lovely dark mixed. So I'll do that. I will use my color shaper. We're not right in the center of interest, so I can get away with just doing some random fur-like things. I'm just getting a sense of... I think I want to mostly push down, not pull up. Um, because it, it, it's considerably darker just underneath that line, not really above it. Um, 
That being said, you know, I can pull up one or two, but I don't want to do a lot of it. Okay, that's good. I think that works. And I'll come in and with that dark I just made, such a nice dark. I'm going to come in now and I'll suggest the bottom. Just sort of loose strokes of his little arm and there's a bit of a a pouch there here and then there's definitely a lot of shadow coming under here where it hits his hand paw So those initial marks that we made, I mean, they look really believable. And they were just paint, we were scraping paint around. So, you know, I'm kind of happy with that. I might come in and cover up some of the purpley pigment with this darker blue. Um, I'm just going to, again, suggest some fur here. And again here. Um, I'm going to come back in a bit with his snout because I find it's just... It doesn't have the dimension I'm hoping for, and that's okay. I mean, I am. This is the detail stage, so this is where I, if I don't see the dimensions or I don't see the shape uh, developing the way I'm hoping, then I can come in and, and work in those areas. And I, I do typically go from my center of interest out. Um, and again, I'm just suggesting that was a very light brush. It was mostly scumbling as opposed to, to making marks. You could lay your paint down and, and then float a bit of water on it if you wanted to. Um, I'm just establishing now the values in the shadow side of the face. It's dark there, but it's not, it's not black. There's a bit of detail, but not so much that we want to you know, uh, see every tiny little piece. So, so yeah, he's getting some shape now. He's getting developed. Now, I think I'm gonna come in now with that dark just one more time and re-suggest the bottom edge of that snout. And again, there's a bit of water in my brush so it's not complete pigment, but I just, I wanna make sure that I've got that that uh, shape well defined and I'm just kind of outlining it with dabs of my brush not really making a line and this is what I like why I like using my flats because instead of painting a line like this which I can do I can just dab and then I can break that line up without it looking consistent but it still reads as a line in a painting and it's just uh, science. Our eyes prefer that. Our eyes don't like everything being consistent and the same. Okay, so that's coming along. He's getting a bit more shape here to his mouth. He should be the smiling squirrel, shouldn't he? <laughs> and we'll get the shape here. I'll just clean that up with my finger. So once we get like our whiskers on this side, the detail here doesn't really matter because we're going to cover it up with whiskers and people's eyes will come to the snout and follow a whisker. So kind of this area here is, is insignificant. Don't paint every, don't waste your time painting anything in this area. Um, the part of me that is going to resemble fur because the whiskers are going to take your eye right over it and away. Trust me, it will. Um, look at that. So there's a little squirrel kind of popping out here. Still have the racing stripe on his head though. So um, I'm going to come in with this lighter, this little lighter gray. Um, 
with the, the kind of the palette mud, I guess, I, I made earlier. And I'm going to just sort of start covering that up in some spots. It will dry darker. Um, I'm going to come in and I'll reestablish the little bit of dark that was in there again. But I really, I have to get rid of that stripe. I'm, I'm going to go crazy if I have to look at it anymore. It's just, it's, it was, you probably won't see me putting oop, tape on my paintings again. I just thought, oh, what the heck, let's try it. I know some artists do it. Some watercolor artists will tape out um, tree trunks using painter's tape on their, their paper. So, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Not going to know unless I try. So I tried <laughs> and I don't like. That's not to say you shouldn't do it. If you got a masterpiece from using tape, stick with it. You go. Nice. Okay, so that's that's much better to me not having to look at that awful stripe on the poor little baby's head. Okay. Now see, we're putting gray down, but the warmth of that initial lay of color, it's still coming through. And uh, I just love that because it warms up that that uh, that lovely um, gray. I didn't have to mix a custom color. I'm just letting the transparency of these paints do what they do. So I can come in now while the paint's a little wet and I will use my color scraper just to give it some texture. I'm gonna try and stay away from our little line there. I don't wanna highlight that white line, but I will pull up some, some strokes in other areas that are fur-like, that follow the kind of the shape of, of this little guy's head. And again, I'm still going to add in some darker colors. Uh, another gray, probably. Um, and I will pop over here and try and stay away from the stripe. There. There. Yeah, coming along. Nice. Okay. I'm going to mix a bit of that darker gray with this lighter gray that I have and get kind of a middle value gray. Um, I'll use my knife here and scrape that all together. Just not as light as what we've been working and not as dark as what we've been working. Just something in the middle and see where I have an opportunity to use this value. I think maybe in this area here, because he's got this lovely um, cascade down into shadow on this one side of his body. Yeah, that's a lovely, cool color. And uh, just sort of a little here. And again, it's on my palette. I'm just looking for opportunities to use this value. I'm. It's not so much the color as it is the value. It's not too dark. It's not too light. There's lots of opportunities to put this in certain areas to help me suggest form. And you notice as I lay it down, it's starting to make him look three-dimensional because we have lights, darks, and middle values. Without lights, darks, and middle values, we can't make a shape. And no, I don't know about you guys, but I always tend to have to make noise. If I'm talking to my kitties, if I'm painting. Um, the only time I don't is if I'm meditating. I'm pretty good when I meditate, unless I'm doing a mantra. But just going to try and break up some of those marks. That I just, you know, I don't want it to be a solid gray line, so. And again, I'm just going to look for opportunities to reinforce that shadowed side here. And. Okay. I think I'm going to come in. I'm going to mix just a bit of this in with the, the ears. Just a tiny, tiny bit. Not too much. But I don't want the dark of the ear to be so overwhelmingly dark that we get lost up there yet. I want to get in the rest of my values, get him looking really three-dimensional first, 
then I'll come back and see how that goes. Okay, so I'm just going to pull some fur like strokes. Ah, see, he's starting to get three-dimensional now. And again, I'm starting, this is my area of concern right here. The rest, you notice we haven't worked here. We haven't, we're not worried about the tail. Um, we're, we're focusing here and going everywhere else. So I'm just going to clean up my brush a little because I can't remember what I put on there after I was talking. <laughs> going to make a bit more of this lovely gray. And I think it's pretty close to what I was working with there. Nope, it needs to be a bit darker. I'm going to put a bit more blue in too. A bit more dark. I'll do this. That's better. Oh. Such a cutie. I do like squirrels. squirrels. I know lots of people hate them. I'm, I'm a bird watcher too, so I have bird feeders out. And, um, you know, the squirrels come. And I got mama squirrels right now because it's early, early spring. So they're all taking as much seed as they can so they can go home and fill their little ones in their nests filled with food. So... I'm well, just a, I'm a sucker for wildlife and animals. I, I have an opportunity to bring some of that uh, lovely bluish color right there. Um, and then maybe just up to the snout. Again, I don't want to isolate. I really like the color that I just mixed. So I'm going to pull it into s some of the other spots. And again, it doesn't have to be a lot, but you just got to share the love. If it's isolated, it's like people. It's gonna that color is gonna feel bad. We don't want the color to feel bad, people, do we? Do we? No. So <laughs> I wanna I wanna hug this little guy. He's adorable. Okay, so I gotta do a bit of work on this forearm because you know <laughs> I forgot to paint it in until like way too late. So let's do this. He's got like a pouchy elbow there. It must be a mama squirrel. Are you a mama squirrel? Do not know. That's nice. And I think I'll bring a, just a little bit of this color in onto the paw here. Mix just a bit more up. And we'll do, there is a bit of a dark, actually I should do it a bit darker, let's do that. Right here beside the hand, paw. <laughs> I will try to correct myself, but it will be hard. Oh, nice. And then again, I'm going to lighten that up a bit. And up there, and there's a bit of a darker tone. Yeah, don't forget, we're still going to come in there with all our lights. And I think I'm going to introduce some of that just right there because the light, the way the light's hitting the squirrel, there seems to be a bit of a shadow just around the bottom edge of the eye here. Oh, my neighborhood pigeons are here. I, uh, I throw food out on the ground, actually, for all the ground feeding birds. <laughs> the Halliburton apparently has a, a big, quite a pigeon population, <laughs> and they've discovered that I do that a few times a day. So between the, the pigeons, the juncos, the grackles, the cowbirds, the red winged blackbirds, I have uh, the, the, these gangs of pigeons come and eat with the chipmunks and everybody else. Okay, that's better. Um, his snout now. His snout seems very one-dimensional to me, so I'm going to come in with that color. Just a little ways on his snout. That's better. And I still have lots of opportunity to work on his snout, too. I'm not too, too worried about it. I, you know, I won't sign a painting until it's done, but you guys might get bored. Feel free to speed up the video if uh, there's areas of interest or you're way past me and you said, no, nah, I've done enough detail. I like what I've got. But I've 
I'm trying to teach you to paint like a pro and I've won tons and tons of awards so um, I must be doing something right. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's my <laughs> that's how I see it. Somebody out there somewhere likes what I'm doing. There. I'm just going to make some fur like shapes in my Wonderful. That little critter's coming along quite nicely. Just breaking up the blobs of paint I put on. So you'll notice at this stage I don't really float paint often. Um, I am focused more on shapes and details and getting lines in where they should be in. And uh, I like that dark. I'm going to bring some of that dark down into his uh, little paw here in the foreground. And I definitely should bring some up into his tail. Not a lot, but you know, I want his I want his paw to sort of stick out. So because it's something with detail, we know he's standing on something. So our eyes are gonna go from here to here to here. And they'll probably come back up if I do it properly and just drop in the darks in the right spot, our eyes will come back up here and up the tail and then kind of back down. So this is bullseye composition. Ooh, bullseye composition. We don't want your eye um, like this right now. I think I may end up just wiping that right off my paper because I'm not in love with how that worked out. So we'll see though. I'm still. Um, so just going to suggest some of the dark that's on this paw towards the front and uh, giving just a bit of interest, not enough to take your eye off, so I'm not using my darkest dark here, but enough that people can, you know, it reads as a detail, and you're like, oh, look, that must be his little, his little paw there. I'm going to take my wet brush because this area is in shadow. I'm just going to drop the water in on this. And this is a watercolor technique. So basically what I'm doing is I'm hard edge on one side, soft edge on the other. And it can be really, really effective. Giving you a lovely graduated uh, dissipation of your pigment. Ooh sounded technical. Um, now this comes back this way and we kind of have a there. I like that for now. Um, I'm running out of dark. I'll have to mix a bit more. I think that suggests a a paw really well and then I can darken the shadow up right here underneath them underneath the belly pull up a bit of that shadow color into the fur and taking just water on my brush I'm just gonna this one end and that shadow will float down and we'll have a, a stronger value closer to the fur than we will farther away from the fur. Um, and again, I'll probably suggest the same. I just gotta mix up a bit more dark here. And again, that is just French ultramarine, equal parts uh, vat and alizarin crimson. Okay. Oh, and I forgot I gotta put a bit of nickel as a gold in there, or it will be very, very purpley blue. And this neutralizes it and gives me that beautiful dark. Okay, so <laughs> oh it's looking so cute. And we haven't even started to build the highlights yet, so wait till we get to that part. 
We're still kind of developing. We're developing, I guess you would say, a solid foundation. And then once we add the dark darks and the light lights, oh my goodness, he's going to just pop right out. You're going to want to hug him and kiss his little nose. Well, I will. I don't know if you will. Okay, so I just kind of based, I wanted to get that, that bit of darkness that's on the top of his snout in. The snout needs a bit more dimension. Of course, this is our center of interest, so I need to pay attention to it, and I want to get those values right. I want my darks right. I want my lights right, and we haven't really started working on the, the lights yet. But if he reads already three-dimensional like a squirrel, then I'm pretty confident that once I start getting my lighter colors in, I, I'm, I'm good. I'm away to the races. I did that bit a bit too strong, so I gotta, that was a little too round, that little mark I made, so I'm just gonna go take a bit of it off. That's better. And that way. Okay. Nice. Ah, I just undid what I was trying to do. Oh, that happens sometimes. There, that's better. Um, I'm gonna come in with just a bit of a lighter gray. So that line's really thick, and in the reference photo, there is a definitive difference, but it's not, like, it's not a solid line. That's better. Okay. There we go. Yeah, it was just, it was screaming a little too significantly to me um, to pay attention to it, and I, I don't want to. We will have whiskers there shortly that will, will draw our attention. I'm just going to bring some brush strokes in the way the, the fur would go there on his face. I still have to put the details in around the eyes. We haven't really done the eyes. I've been working on the snout and, and the front uh, arm simply because I'd forgotten to paint the arm in, which I think is, is really funny. <laughs> goes to show you even experienced artists, you know, as we work, we just, it's all troubleshooting as we're going through this stuff, so... Okay. I just gotta, my goal was to get to that other paw, so I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna come up here and we'll just pop in some dark here and bring it out a little. And there's something that looks like a claw. I'm not sure what that is, but oh, I'll paint it in. And then the dark comes in behind. And just a little here. Oop, that's a little heavy. I'll come in with my color shaper and I will pull that dark out. <laughs> Throw my color shaper on my squirrel. Um, it kind of comes out and then goes up a bit. And dissipates. I'll just leave it like that for now. I'm just trying to get all the toes suggested here. And there's that one. And then there's a little itty bitty one behind that. It's sort of And again, I'm just looking at areas up opportunity because I've got the dark on my palette. I'm just filling in the areas of dark where his paws would be. They don't have to look exactly um, I still have the opportunity. I'm going to come in with lights and make things look even more fur like. And I can suggest little things that look kind of like claws here. <laughs> Those are more like grizzly bear claws instead of little gray squirrel claws. <laughs> Could you imagine if our little squirrels had grizzly bear claws? Oh, no feeder would be safe. Okay, nice. I'm 
I'm going to bring some of those grays now up into the tail and start dropping them in there because the tail's looking pretty isolated. We got lots of wonderful stuff going on here, so now I gotta I gotta bring some of that stuff up. And then I'll come in and do the final detail on the center of interest. And then our latest lights, and we are done, I think. Um, I won't do probably any more detail here. I really like what happened there. Um, maybe suggesting the shadow a bit there. And shadows. It's all the same value, which I find pretty harsh, so it might be a little nicer to lighten it up just a bit. I'm just going by eye. You know, I don't want to pull our eye from the center of interest to that paw. I want it to kind of travel down once once our lights are kind of on our little friend here. And uh, we kind of want everybody to follow our... I need, I'm picking up a bit of a, that darker dark that we... Just my, my regular dark with the alizarin crimson, the ultramarine blue, and the touch of azo gold. And just because there is a darker line here that comes up into the tail, and I can take advantage of that to pull our eye from this area. People will come here, go up this texturized spot there, and get to this dark line, and they'll go, oh, we can go up now. <laughs> and then I'll use this opportunity to emphasize some of that there. And I'm going to leave mostly the magenta in the tail because I just I think that's just brilliant. I love it. And um, there's opportunity for me to define some of that uh, darker gray up here as well. And again, with this darker value going in, when we put our lights up there, oh, that tail is going to sing. That's what's going to make it glow in the sunshine. So you got to make sure. I know it looks white in the photo, but without these darks, that white's not going to do anything. And I'm going to lay in these darks here now. Hey, Dottie. I have a kitty cat that's making noises. She's just laying on the couch, complaining. Mm -hmm. And this is really dark in this area here. Now see how all of a sudden the tail's behind the squirrel, the head is coming forward, um, and that's, you know, that's kind of what we want. <laughs> we don't want the tail on the front of the squirrel. <laughs> but this is because we're building up those values correctly, and um, we're using warms and darks um, and detail. So the level of detail is becoming less and less the farther back we move from the face of the squirrel. And that really, really helps suggest the center of interest and the depth in the composition as well. You know, and we could paint every little bit of detail into the tail of the squirrel, but um, again, that's an issue when you paint from photographs. Uh, when we look at things with our eyes, we don't we don't see 360 degrees all the same detail. We see things in um, focal point, and then as your, as your peripheral vision moves out, it becomes less and less detail. So um, I find, for me, when I paint that way, it's, it's much more suggestive, a bit ethereal, but very accurate to what an, an eye perceives. So I'm just trying to follow the darks in the reference photo in the tail. And I'm just using my color shaper to suggest those fur-like strokes. Like how fun is that? It looks like a it looks like a squirrel's tail. And it's magenta for the most part. <laughs> I'm going to come back in with the darker dark and drop that in just in this area where the darker darks are. Because we still have to come in here with our lights. Don't forget. So don't don't get worried. We're going to highlight all the things, and that's really going to pop the shape of this, this little guy out once we come in and highlight things. Oh, what a cutie. And again, just pulling that dark down, making sure 
it's uh, allowing our eye to follow it and I'm going to pull that dark up into the scroll. Now, a few more marks here and here. Nice. Oh, he's taking shape. Sorry, he's getting a little out of the picture frame there. Okay, so. Lovely. I'm going to let them dry, then I'm going to come in and we'll do the final details in this area. And then from there, I'll see what I want to do as far as the background goes. But I'm really liking the idea of that not being there. I could do this too. I don't know. Maybe I'll leave a bit of it. I don't know. Okay, I'm going to take a few minute break and uh, I'll be back. You'll see now that I have added some raw umber onto my palette and everything else has remained uh, the same. And uh, now you don't see quite everything there. I do. <laughs> I have my other yellows just a little over here and some titanium white. Um, but I, I thought I'd opt for the larger um, larger view of my painting so you can see more of the marks I'm making and I hope that's okay so let me know in the videos if you have um, any suggestions how I can make this setup better for your viewing pleasure okay so I've got out my found my new color shaper I ordered and I ordered this through Gortzman's uh, G W A R T Z M A N Gortzman's in Toronto and they will ship art supplies out right now because of COVID so they are under lockdown as much as the rest of the province. So I'm going to come in now and I'm going to start going around and dropping in some lighter values probably just a pale gray a lighter gray and see if I can bring some of these areas in shadow up a little and uh, balance out those values just a bit. Um, we're nowhere near the whiter white and darkest darks, but we are getting into adding the value stage. So I'm going to go ahead and just start with that. Um, for the beginning, I will probably use, let's see. I'm going to come in with my, this is a nice new brush. Um, it's a number 20 round that I just, I'm just going to get some water on that. A nice uh, pointed Lang, Lang nickel, uh, Royal and Lang nickel, number 20 rounds. So I'm going to start with that and I'm going to mix up uh, a nice gray value. Now, I was using some of the permanent rose already, so I'll continue with that. I was using some of the, uh, uh, the permanent um, violet. I'll continue with that. And, oh, look at that lovely creamy magenta color. I'm going to bring in some French ultramarine blue. I'm getting a lovely mauve. So um, again, with the mauve, I need to add a bit of yellow. I'll come in with, I think my dairy allied yellow might be a little too yellow. So we'll try some Indian yellow. And that's going to gray that down a little, neutralize it. And I think I want to go with just a bit more blue. I don't want it too, too purple. A little more blue in there. I want it more on the blue than I want on the, the red side. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to just take some of that paint out of my brush, pull that on my palette, and then I'm going to drop in on one half a bit of white. Now that's a, a lovely light lavender color. Um, I, I'll start with that. I like that. A lot of shadows can be uh, in the lavender range. So let's come in and we'll, we'll start with that then. We'll start bringing in some of those areas of, of light over here. And we'll, he's got those cute little folds. 
of chub. <laughs> squirrel chub, squirrel chub. Um, bring it up towards the eye into the side of his little cute little um, face. And his arm is not as dark as the kind of the lines of the rolls. So I'll bring, I'll drop a little bit of, ooh, getting messy there. Uh, drop a little bit of that into the arm. Ha, now I'm going to take my new color shaper. Yay, how exciting. And just sort of bring some marks into that that will, and I'm going to push up into the darker paint we laid down already. So I'm pushing and pulling that. And I will do sort of the same here. I'm pulling that first line up towards his eye. It just gives the fur a direction. And then we'll just separate. I don't have to do a ton of it, but just enough to give it there. Nice. You know, that color shaper is quite interesting. I like that. Um, we're going to come down in here again. A little, a little uh, roll, a little bit farther down. Again, I'll just take my color shaper, give that fur some direction. I'm pushing the paint here. And, oh, that's cute. Let's see. I think we can bring in some on this hip here. Now see as we add and we still we've got lighter values, darker values, and this is a nice mid. And uh, he's becoming even more or she more three dimensional, which is, you know, that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. So creating form is basically having a light, a middle and a dark. Regardless of what it is, if whether you're doing a snout or an ear or a whisker, that object should always have a light, a middle, and a, and a dark. And uh, so I'm just adding a bit more white to what I have on my palette. And I'm going to come in right in this area and define that bit of the belly roll. Nice. So we're getting a nice um, clear change between here with the darker value and this middle value. So that definitely gives us some dimension there. I'm going to pull this up just sort of back here where it's a little dark. Good. And we're going to pull that down into now, obviously this area of the squirrel's belly will be paler, but we're going to pull that down around the outer edge and then back up into that lighter area. And again, we can pull it in the direction the fur is coming. We will do this here and here. And that way we don't have such an abrupt transition between the shadow and the white of the belly. We have this lovely transitional value that will help create some dimension and depth there. I'm going to just bring some over this uh, one little paw and I'm going to introduce a little bit of this mid value just into the paw that we suggested. Um, simply this paw is not in light at all. So we don't need anything significant here. I prefer not to have anything significant here because it could draw our eye right back off of the piece. So just suggesting some dimension um, I think is going to work well. And we'll introduce some of it just into a couple of the toes on this side. And let's see, do we need any on the snout? He's got a little area of mid value just on the left side there. Oh, that look how cute that is. That just helped define that. And then we have a bit of an area coming here. Um, this side's going to be done with a sunlight value, a very light pale value, but that just helps create that lovely um, roundness to his face. And that kind of comes up. And again, because we're using transparent paint, this is um, allowing us to see the dark underneath. 
which helps give all those marks we've previously made are showing up. I'm just going to add this to me is just a little too, uh, same, same. The, the value just says too much there. So I'm going to break it up just a little, not a ton. Um, We just, there we go. I think that's better. And I think this needs a bit of a stopper there. My eye was sort of following this right up a little too far. And there, we want it to take you to the eye, but not up and away from the eye. So again, I'm gonna suggest some fur marks. Wonderful. Well, it's coming along quite nice. And he has a bit of a, a lighter, value here coming up into the darker ear. Mm. Not sure I want to play too much. I don't really want to do anything um, significant on the inside of the ear. I like it the way it is. So I'm going to leave that for now because in the final, the final darks and lights, I can come back in and add some value there. Um, Again, same thing here. I don't really want to go ahead and just add things in. I think I can drop a bit of this transitional value just up against that darker shadow and a little in this area. Uh, now behind this eye, I'm going to introduce some of this color just so it's a bit more consistent. We have a lot of it in this area and we don't want to isolate it too much. So what I'm going to do is just bring it in there. I think that's well, that's good. And we'll work up towards the back here. He has, uh, it, this shows how rotund our little friend is. He's a well-fed squirrel, this one. We took pictures of him. He, he must, the public must feed him a lot because he came right up under the picnic table where we were sitting and was about a foot from us while he was eating his uh, spoils. So we were feeding him. Uh, I'm vegan and I uh, eat a lot of nuts and dried fruits for snacks. So whenever I hike, that's typically my snack food. And this little one thought that was just wonderful. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to add some water to my brush now because I don't want this to be so um, uh, I want it to be a bit more transparent. So adding uh, the water is going to dilute that color just a little. Working with the same color, but when it dries, it will be a bit of a, a more transparent value range. I'm just covering up some of the lights in here because I want to come back in and introduce them with a lovely warm white and by covering up that that bright white of the paper we'll be able to do that again a bit more water into this now I'm going to introduce this color into the tail because right now it's isolated just right here so let's come up and look for opportunities in the tail I think right in through here and again this is uh, a bit more water than paint um, we don't need a lot of specific detail back in the tail and uh, we just want to suggest areas of light, middle value and dark. Okay, I like that. I'm going to give the tail just a little of a spritz too. I want to keep the tail loose. I don't want too many contrived marks. And again, bring our color shaper in. We can pull and push a bit of that color. And that again is going to lend to um, marks that resemble fur. Yeah, these, these color shapers, I do highly recommend. Uh, if you don't have one, use a toothpick. Um, the tip of an eraser, um, anything that won't scratch your paper, a broken pencil that has the, um, the end 
you know, no graphite coming out of it, you could use that as well. Anything that can push or pull your paint. I just, the color shapers, um, as opposed to my first layer where I use this tool, the color shaper has a bit more control and I'm able to suggest where I want those marks um, with a little more precision than what I do when I use my twigs. Um, oh, he's, he's really cute. He's coming along. So now what I'm going to do, I want to change this value a little now for some of the even lighter areas. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in with more blue, drop that in, mix it up with what was left there. And I'm going to add a bit of, I'm going to add a bit of raw umber and see if I can get some of the purple feel to disappear. Cause I want it to be, feel a bit warmer now cause the lighter areas are gonna be close to areas that are in sun and sun is always a warm, a nice warm light. And if you want things to look like they're glowing in sun, then the sunshine should be warm and your shadow cool. That uh, has always been sort of my rule of thumb. You can switch it up if you want. You can make the sun, the things that are in light cooler and the shadows warmer, um, which is an interesting thing to do as well. And it does work. Um, just not, for me, it's not as effective as this, as making my sun a lovely warm color. And areas that are closer to the areas in sun I start to warm up my values. So even though we're still using a neutral gray, it's a much warmer gray than what we were just previously doing. The one we were doing was quite purple, a lot, almost a, a lavender color. So this, as you can see, as it's going down is not the same. It is cooler. Uh, so that raw umber was, it was nice. It, was, it did what I, I really was hoping it would do. And as we transition out of the area in shadow into the area of sun, this warmer gray makes a nice transitional step. So we're not making a gigantic leap. Um, now we can make a leap, that's fine. I mean, a lot of black and white artwork is, is uh, or artwork with really high value changes is really attractive. Um, it's just not typically how I like to portray the sunshine. I find for these guys, because they're so small and, and delicate, that um, subtlety helps create that character of preciousness. You know, he's not, they're not architectural pieces, components, um, stark or, um, gigantic landscapes. They're, they're small, precious little things, or sometimes big things if I'm doing a moose. But I just find the subtlety in the light changes is really um, how I like to work. So I'm going to mix up some of that color again, because I, I didn't have much left on my palette, and uh, I went through it pretty quick. So I'll start by with mixing up that kind of lavender purple we had. And then I will add the French ultramarine into it with a bit of the raw umber. And again, this is an imperfect science. Um, it's almost equal. Um, equal amounts of sort of the blue. Well, actually, no, it's more blue, more of the, the uh, French ultramarine and equal amounts of sort of the burnt or the raw umber and the pinky purple. There. I think I'll put even just a bit more raw umber in that because I do want to push it to the, to the warm side. And there's quite a bit of yellow in that raw umber. There. Okay. I think that's pretty close to what I had last time. I'll lighten it up a bit with my white, titanium white. Okay, well, actually, I think it could even be just a bit lighter. Yeah, good. Okay, so I'm going to come in just sort of the areas between the light and dark. Put some marks in. Um, a bit of light hits the top of that thigh there. 
or haunch. <laughs> I guess a squirrel could have a thigh. I'll just pull that down. That was a bit heavy there. And I'm just going to bring some of that up. I, I was a little heavy handed with, with the paint and I'm just lifting it with my finger. Um, we get quite a bit of light coming through this side of the tail, which helps define that back end. So I'm going to bring a little bit of this lighter gray in just in here. Doesn't have to be a lot. And then again, I'm going to spritz that just a bit with my spritzer and then add some tail uh, fur marks. Nice. And there, see, we preserved that darker line, but the value change between here and here is very similar now. We don't have that stark, stark contrast, which is basically what I was after. Um, I'm going to warm up this area just right here a little. I find that a little too cool. Um, just I'm, what I'm doing is sort of, I'm looking at our, um, our reference photo and this area of the squirrel, a lot of the brownie orange is showing through where it's pretty much gray here. So anywhere it's sort of the brownie orange, I'm just kind of coming in and, and, and introducing the warmth to represent the warmth of that brownie orange rather than a gray. And let's see, I think I'll just pull this up towards the ear. And we've got some opportunity here in his face to bring this from the area in sun up to the ear. And then we can drop some into this eye area right up to the left ear. And then down the top of the snout towards his nose. And I'm going to just break that up a little. I found that was pretty harsh there. And uh, as we go to the left, we just don't see. Uh, he's got quite a cute little chub chubby kind of area here that goes into. Oh, nope, that's his nose. Let me take that out. So it's adjacent to this part of his cheek is where I was actually looking and trying to represent. I want just a bit more white in that. Because the, the top of this light pale part here has a, a bit of a, a chubby cheeky area that abuts the, the bottom of his snout there. That's better. I'll just use my color shaper to define that line a bit more. And uh, I want to keep the angle of his snout correct <laughs> as well. <laughs> okay, there we go. I like that. Now, that sort of defined his little cheek area there. And that kind of comes, it's a bit warmer. And that brings us up to the warmth that's surrounding his eye here. And then we can warm up the line back there. Introduce that, just to drop that a little behind the ear. There. There. And just looking anywhere where we're going to have that warm light. I'm looking for opportunities to have this in between our light and dark value. Nice. Okay. Don't think I really need any of that in this foot. Um, we could, no, I'm not going to introduce any of the warm there. And I think maybe just a little higher up in the tail, up in this area here. I don't want a lot of detail going up because I don't want to prematurely pull your eye off this little guy. Lots of marks in this area is fine, but I sort of want to quiet what's pulling up and off the uh, piece. Okay, I like that. So now I'm going to come back in with an even lighter 
light. I'll move this off to the side. This might come in handy. I could mix it with uh, another white. So I think what I'll do now is I'm going to introduce the warm white in the areas where um, the sun's shining. Now the thing about this is the sun, I may have to do um, two or three layers of this to get it to, to pop. And that's okay. Um, that tends to happen uh, when I deal with my whites. The white's transparent paint as well. Um, not as transparent as my other colors. I'm going to add a bit of the Hansi Yellow Middle. I, I want my, I want to see that warmth in the white. Now see what I did there. That's far too, far too yellow. <laughs> So I'm going to bring in some white just to the edge and then mix and more white just to the edge and mix. And that's still fairly yellow, but what I'll do is I'll apply this in the areas where there is light. I just, I've lost my lights, so I need to go back in and, and reintroduce them. And uh, if this first stage is a bit on the yellow side, that's okay because I can lighten that even more when I come in on top and do another layer. And hopefully we'll, we'll be able to get away with two layers. So I'm just going to, I'm choose, arbitrarily choosing his little paw to, um, to start defining some detail with my, my lighter color. And uh, that's working well. And I'm just looking at sort of the shapes of these lighter values. I'm not looking at it right now saying, oh, I need to paint in this finger or this on the paw. It's just, there's a pointy shape here with a bit of a, a bit of a, a bend on it. So that, <laughs> that works there. And then we've got some uh, little fur shaped pieces coming up the side of this little guy. And we're going to just follow that right up to basically, it comes right up to the, um, the orb in his little eye. And uh, so being able to define the eye well, that will help. And I can even come up and just, I can perfect the shape of the eye that way. So he doesn't look quite so bug-eyed. <laughs> I knew I could paint over that edge of the eye earlier, so I wasn't too, too worried. Now there is a bit of highlighting, and I'm not going to make a line. I'm just making little dots that are, are relatively close together, um, because the closer we get to the uh, eye, the brighter that seems to be. And then again, just a couple of dots in this area. Now, where we'll come in and uh, do another layer, these will probably, in this area, we won't do another layer. What I'm putting down now is going to be the defining light value, I believe, between here and here. We're just trying to show that there's more going on than just an eye on this side, um, because he does, he has this upper part of his shoulder, the, the top of the haunch of his back hip here, and that's all defined by light, mid, and darker value. So we'll pull some of those fur-shaped pieces down. That's good. I like that. So once it's dry, it's going to dry darker. You'll see in about uh, seven or eight minutes, it won't be quite so distinctive. And that's okay because we don't really need it to be. I'm going to come in and define the top of this eye now um, with this, this pale, pale yellow that we made. Uh, see if I can get it. So it's quite rounded. then right in the corner is somewhat in darkness in this in this area right here so I don't want light there now and we are going to come back in with the darks again and we'll we'll add even more darks uh, to some of the darker areas not all of them but to the, the the ones that need more dark we will 
And again, this the side of this ear has a bit of the light value. And then right here beside it where the sun is hitting. Now let's pull some of that down into the fur. So it gives it even more of a fur-like consistency. And we'll pull some of that in this way now to help suggest that, hey, this is, you know, one side of his head and it's in sunlight. And uh, I'm just going to dab some here because the light would be picked up on the tufts of fur. Okay, nice. I like that, that, that. That will work. Now he's got some dots that kind of come down in this area behind his, his one eye in the sun, in the light. And then it just sort of highlights the fur up his little snout to his uh, eye that's in the shade. So I'm going, to, I'm going to get people to follow these little dots of light. I'm going to pull them with my color shaper to make them look more fur-like. I mean, if you want to use a liner brush and paint each individual piece of fur, you, you go right ahead. There's a lot of wildlife artists that do. They love using sword-shaped liner brushes. Um, I don't actually have a sword-shaped one, but you could use the liner brush and paint every piece of fur if you wanted to. I just, I like the color shaper. I find it does the exact same thing that I, I'm looking for. Now, we have quite a bit more of the light. I'm just sort of starting on this whole edge and working my way in. So I'm just kind of making it consistent all the way through. So around this shadow behind his ear is um, quite, quite sunny. And uh, it, it basically encompasses the top of his head and his back. It's really hard to discern what is what there and that's okay we don't have to have a lot of detail there it's not as important to our composition as his ears his snout and his eyes so i'm going to highlight definitely that left ear and bring in little little lines in towards um, the beginning of the ear the skin of the ear i guess some over the top of the ear and that just makes the sunlight more believable because fur would be popping around all over the place there and let's see now we're going to come back in and that kind of comes down i'm gonna brighten that up a little bit so in areas like this area right here behind the shadow um, the top of this year there's an opportunity for us to come back in again and make those even just a bit brighter we're just working on that form right now. And you need to have a light, a middle, and a dark to make form. And that's working out really well for us now. But once we get these basics in, we'll be able to see where we can improve that. Now there is a bit of a, now I'm gonna pull that up. That's, that's a little too stark and that's okay. I can pull it off with my finger or a tissue um, if you don't like having paint on your hands. But I'm just going to dab that with my finger. And so now it gives me another value entirely um, once that's dry. And I may have to come in and highlight that again. But I just didn't want it too, too bright. I'm doing the highlight. Now the highlight on moist areas like a, a snout tends to always be a bit brighter. And we've got this little paw. That paw's in shadow. So the top of this foot has quite a bit of light coming out into it. now, And I don't need to recreate his little paw. I'm just going to suggest some toes by using the light value that we've got uh, here we're using. And uh, there. I don't need to do much more than that, I don't think. I could break up a little bit of those lines, um, just, you know, so they don't look all the same. Okay. And uh, I'm going to bring that back just a little to suggest that there's more to the foot. 
and I'm going to pull this down a little to suggest that bottom knuckle because again it can help our eyes move around the piece that's sort of the purpose of our lights and darks it, it, you know not only just making the squirrel look like he's sitting in the sunshine um, but it does help our body our eyes move around his body or her body um, I'm going to introduce some of the lights here now and again I want those fur looking marks so we'll do this and there's not a ton of um, I am going to just sort of highlight that back curve down to approximately this area. And I'm going to come in now with a wet brush, take that color off a wet brush, and I'm gonna to come to the one side of that line I just made with the wet brush. And that will help define that edge without making it too stark. And I will come in probably and do that one more time as well. And that will help um, uh, because we have color here, having that lighter line will help give that impression of bright sunshine as well. So we're gonna come back up here and just start adding those lighter values around the ear. Um, it looks almost like the top of that ear is highlighted completely as well down this way. And uh, there's a little kind of tuft of fur that's really getting highlighted in that area. So see how now we're starting to really get that third dimension kicking in now that we're introducing some of the sunshine highlights. I'm going to pull that down a little and then just because I don't want them to be all so consistent, I'll break up some of those tufts on the top of the ear. And let's see, this also kind of comes down. Now that's quite, uh, <laughs> oops, that's a little heavier than what I wanted. So I'm gonna come in with my color shaper and scrape some of that. That's ah, not working. Okay, let's come in with a Q-tip. <laughs> this is a dry Q-tip. And I'm gonna just take some of that off. That's better. I just, I want a little bit of a line there, but not so much. And I think I can come in and just do a dot or two. Is it's not in bright, bright sunshine there, but the ear does have extra dimension. So we want to make sure that area there was a bit highlighted. Now we've got some brighter highlights here that kind of come up this in this sense. And again, I'm going to take this color shaper and I'm just going to pull some of that through and make it look a bit more fur-like. And uh, we have sort of random little bursts of fur here, little highlighty kind of that suggest they're getting picked up. Just the long, long pieces of fur are getting picked up in the sunshine. And again, my color shaper, and I'm gonna just pull those through soften them up a bit and uh, we can come back in and highlight these and I think what uh, if we push in some um, a, a few more middle or darker values around those too that would help now we're going to come in with the choo -choo -choo, the light in the tail so there's quite a significant amount um, up in this corner here and here. I don't want to have it too light as we come up and around the tail because I don't want to lose people completely off my piece. I don't want them going to the next piece in the exhibition or on the wall. I want them to sort of stay. So I'm gonna, I'm not gonna pull it right up to the edge of the canvas on this side. And on this one, I'm gonna, and I'm doing this as just lots of paint now because the, the light, we're gonna pull this into the tail and I think some more here. All right, so let's just uh, pull, push. And then again, I'm just gonna repeat that here. We're gonna pull that down into the tail. We're gonna push that out and pull it in. And we're gonna pull down here in. 
and push out. And that broke that up quite nicely, made that look a lot more realistic looking. Uh, I'm going to take out some of that there. Okay. Nice. Little guy's coming along. Okay, so let's get my... Okay, so I'm going to come back in now in this area and do a bit more definition. Um, it is a gray squirrel, but I've lost some of the warmth that I had. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to do a bit of glazing. Um, and I don't think we've really glazed in any of my other videos yet, but I think the white should be pretty much dry. That's yeah. So the lighter value we put in on his face is, is dry now. So I'm going to come in with a, um, a glaze and a glaze is just, you can use glazing medium. But because I use fluid acrylics for the most part, I tend to just use a bit of water because they're very highly pigmented. Um, I'm going to come in with some Indian yellow, which is it's wonderful for making things look like they're in sunlight. I'm going to make sure that's nice and watery. And I'll, I'll just pull this over so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just making a nice watery glaze. Just a little bit of that Indian yellow. A lot more water than paint, that's for sure. Good. And I'm going to bring that in onto areas that should feel warm on his head. So I'm going to reintroduce that warmth here. She, I'm not really happy with that yellow. I'm going to lift it. I think it needs to be even warmer. So I'm going to introduce some red. Um, the question is, is which red? I think I will go with the alizarin crimson. We haven't used it up to this point, and I want something that's going to give us that sun, that warm sunshine feeling. And uh, alizarin crimson is a, a beautiful warm red. So I'm mixing that on my palette with my Indian yellow. So I have more of an orange now. I'm going to come back in. And I'm going to come, I'll start at the base of this ear. I'll drop that warmth in there. Um, top of the ear here has quite a bit of warm. I'll drop that in. Starting sort of behind the highlight. I don't really want to cover up the highlight we did. And that's better. Pulling that down to his snout, where even part of his snout feels warmer than the rest of it. So, and it, it is really the part that's adjacent to the highlights feels really warm. So, we'll warm those up everywhere. Um... I'm going to drop some of the warm in here only because we have to come back in with a dark and that will warm up the dark that we're going to probably be dropping in there. I'm going to just use, I'm going to just apply it very liberally. When you put warmer colors on a painting, it brings that object in the painting closer to you. So say, you know, if this was a tree, if I made that tree trunk very warm, it would pop that tree trunk visually closer to us. It's just a trick of the eye. If you put things in a, oop, <laughs> in blue, um, like when you see things in the distance, when you're looking at a landscape, the hills and trees that are farther away from you are always a blue or, or a purpley tinge. And that's just, it's called atmosphere, atmospheric perspective. And uh, it's just a trick of the, the eye. Um, so I'm going to introduce this warm now and I'm going to bring in, ooh, what should I bring in? I think a little more red. And so we do have kind of an orange there because that's what we were using up here. And I'm going to introduce the redder orange on the sides closer to the shade. Where we go into the darker values in the shade side. And let's see here, where is another opportunity we can introduce that sort of behind the eye, this area. 
with his snout, his little muzzle there. Definitely can introduce some in his hand or paw. And let's see, I think we got an opportunity to drop some in there. Uh, around that ear, sort of in that area. The back of this ear, we can drop some in. And let's come in here and drop some. We've got a transition between light and dark back here, so we can warm that up. And where his folds are, I'm going to introduce this warm orange. And again, this is just glazing. It's just a watery value of color. And we're, we're just basically adding it just on top of what's there. So it helps us keep the piece in that sunlight feeling. And uh, it also helps us, you know, um, suggest the form and the shape. I'm going to bring some of that up into the tail now. I don't want to lose that. I got to mix just a bit more of that up. And again, I'm just using my Indian yellow, alizarin crimson, making a nice orangey red, lots of water. And bring that into this part of the tail and warm that up a bit. Um, so we're going to come back in with more dark in this area. So I'm just sort of surrounding that area with this reddish orange because it's that, that transition from the really dark dark into the mid lights where this orange seems to be glowing. Oh, that's sweet. Okay, let's bring in just a bit there. And so I'm going to now take some of that and this is just my intuition but I think I want to drop some of that into the shadow right underneath it only because if it's reflecting this color should be in the reflection as well um, yes and it just sort of married the two of them together I am going to bring just a little bit of that in under that one paw at the front in this area. I'll warm those little claws up. There. Okay. I'm going to just really, really wet brush. I find that white there. It just needs to be cool or warmed up. Sorry, not cooled up. What Warmed up. Because we are going to come in with a cool white. So... Let's warm it up first and we can cool off certain, certain components of it. Nice. Okay. Now, and as that dries, it won't be quite so stark. It'll be more like a reference photo and it'll become a little more believable. I'm going to come in now and we'll just mix up a dark and we have lots of opportunities to add stuff to our dark we have this lovely gray over here we were using we have our pale our pale uh, yellow here so my dark is a lizard and crimson with ultramarine blue in basically equal parts i'm going to come back in and add a bit more of the ultramarine blue to it and then I'm going to put in a dab of the Azo Gold. It's quite dry on my palette. There. And I'll just puddle that up. Check it on a bit of my Yupo. So here's my test card. I just want to see what kind of... Oh, nice. Okay. I like that. That's a nice neutral dark tending to the warm. Pardon me, warm side. So... Uh, let's come in now and start re-suggesting some of these darks. So I want to do a bit of work on the eye here. The eye needs a bit more uh, detail. So we need to add a bit more of a suggestion of shape around the eye. He has a brow there. that He's got sort of a flat area there. 
comes up on a wee bit of an angle there and comes higher. And this is still a bit wet from dropping in that um, dropping in that middle glaze. And uh, I'm gonna just it comes really close to this this back edge of his eye, so I just want to make sure that I'm I'm getting I want to just get that shape and feel right. It comes up quite a bit and then comes forward. So, and this here is quite dark in comparison. And I'll just use my color shaper to break up some of those lines a little. And we'll bring kind of that, that darkness up to the ear. There's a bit of a And again, this is still a little wet from that, that reddish uh, glaze, the reddish orange glaze that we put in. And that's perfect. That's, I'm not uh, disappointed with that at all. So I'm gonna pull this down. A few marks that look like fur. Nice. He's got sort of a little, um, like a V-shaped quiet area behind his eye before we get to the ear and that's sort of what I'm I'm trying to suggest right now and let's bring this under his eye and it doesn't come all the way to the front it comes about uh, two-thirds and let's make this look more like a fur. Now I hope you're get, getting a better view of what my color shaper is doing as I'm using it. Um, now I want to just bring some of this. He has a, a few little tufts underneath his eye coming out this way and that helped me do that just by dropping that bit of color there. We're gonna pull this up here. Nice. Now I'm going to bring some of that into the eye. Now I'm not going to push it. I'll bring this right up. So when I put color into the eye socket, I'm not going to bring it right to this edge here because there's a water line. There's the, um, I'm not sure what you call the skin in between the actual orb of the eye and the eyelid, but all those things exist. And if I painted right up to that edge, it's gonna look really artificial. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come up about two thirds and suggest the roundness and then use my color shaper and just create some lines. So look how realistic that became. Just, oh, <laughs> just letting a little line stay in there and it just looks, uh, just looks a lot more realistic. People tend to just put way too much paint in the eye sockets and uh, you know it's not really necessary and there is a catch light in this eye too which will help define the roundness in it and uh, just make sure I get that I want to get that shape on that bottom mm, lash line done right nice and then there is kind of a darker line that comes off and defines the upper the upper brow as it comes up. And I will bring this up. Pull that into the nose again. I'm gonna pull some of that up. And we're really getting some dimension now. I am just lightly, there's a line between an upper part of the brow and the lower part of the brow and I'm just sort of uh, suggesting that line. I'll pick some of it up because it's not really, really dark. And let's see where I have more opportunity here. And this comes down towards his snout. We have lots of lovely little whiskers and things that are gonna 
that are going to be added over this lovely gray so i don't want to add anything right here because that's where our whiskers will be um they'll they'll pop right out by adding them in over that so i really i'm happy with the way they've worked out i'm going to add some of this i'm going to introduce some of this dark just working towards the lighter side of the head um, in just sort of brush like shapes or, or fur like shapes um, a bit more here you know just uh, let your artistic muse be the judge what you feel looks fur like um, and i'm just going to use my color shaper to break up some smaller pieces in there nice uh, maybe actually what i'll do i'm going to pull some as well down a little into some of these lighter areas good and let's see we've got some of this darker kind of creeping up to so between the glaze and adding this dark we're really getting um, a three-dimensional feel now to the face of our little friend here okay nice let's see more opportunity so i gotta re sort of establish the dark oh that's still really wet behind that ear <laughs> okay let's try this edge here and uh just bring it back up and down and then this along this outer edge here I'm going to bring my color shaper in and just break some of that line up a little. Mm, I like that. I would just reestablish the back line of that ear. And let's see. Do, 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 do. Okay. There is a. I just feel like this um, darker shadow area here is really important for developing the shape of the brow. But I am still going to come in now with um, an even lighter uh, value once more to highlight that around that eye. So that's where I'm focusing is just in this area right now and making sure that the eye can move between all those components um, well. And naturally makes a we don't uh, we don't want artificial centers of interest taking our attention away. And again, wherever you feel your lines a bit too heavy or you put a bit of too much paint on, take your toothpick or a color shaper, pencil eraser, anything you can that's got a point on it that won't ruin your paper, and. Uh, break that line up a little oh the dental gum things would work great the pointy dental rubber dental gum things would probably be fantastic for that and I do have toothbrushes that I use for splattering so if you can find one with the dental gum pick on the end <laughs> you got the best of both worlds okay I like that and this is a nice area a quiet because the whiskers are going to come right across this area so I, I'm hesitant I don't want to do too much to that area I need to kind of re uh, there's a bit of a darker area just right here on his snout now I just pick a little bit of that up I don't want it too dark there and uh, just along the very very front kind of curling up and around just a little bit to this end now see how we're starting to get that real sunlight feel hey Dottie my my cat Dottie is saying hello to everybody everybody says hello Dot yeah Dottie likes squirrels she says I like squirrels 
she tried to chase a chipmunk yesterday while we were out sweeping our our terrace but <laughs> Dottie has a, a, a very serious weight issue and we'll never hope to catch a chipmunk ever so but it did give her some exercise which is hard pressed to do when you live in an apartment okay so I'm just bringing his I'm trying to um, follow what I'm seeing as far as the shape of that dark area just south of his snout um, I know it's his lip, his lower mouth and lip, but I'm trying not to think of it in that term because I don't, I don't want to try and paint just a, a lip or a mouth. So I'm just trying to uh, nice. Okay. Now let's see where we have an opportunity to go this direction and just a few darker pieces in here. Again, that just helps us with this lovely feeling of sunlight. There's a bit of a dark coming here and then into that knuckle. Now my shapes aren't exactly 100% here, but they're pretty close. They're close enough that it's still reading as a, a front paw in sunlight. So, but you know, my shapes aren't nearly identical to what, what's here. So Look how he's starting to pop right off of the page. Okay. Okay, so I'm not going to do any more to his hands right at the moment. Um, I'm just going to pool my dark there. And come in with some more opportunity. I think I can add a bit of this. I'm just dotting it, not really doing a line. Just underneath that little line of pale color we put in and that just reestablishes the dark and light and gives us that feeling of sunshine there is a dark that comes up behind his eye ridge in the sun facing the sun shot side of his face on this side so now that that was a little too heavy-handed so I'm going to suggest the shape with my color shaper and I will come back in now and See if I can get a better definition on that eye. And I'm still, I'm not using a tiny, tiny detail brush. I'm using a number two um, round. I didn't want to go too, 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 too small because I didn't want to end up over detailing it too quickly. So. Let's pull that out a little. Hmm. I'm just going to add a few suggestions. Pulling your eye across his, his snout. We have a bit in here. And let's just make some uh, fur shaped strokes there. And as that dries, that won't be quite so. Um, suggestive. Now just past his eye we have some darks coming out there. Nice. A little bit of a, a line. Let's work on this area here. Um, I just put a bit down there and picked it back up. And just some suggestions in this area of a darker value. We've got that there. 
And I think we just got to come down now to his foot. And I can do the suggestion here. Just want to break up some of these lines with the color shaper give it some interest make it look a little more like fur as opposed to to paint lines okay nice um let's see oh, i'm gonna minimize that and I think that's nice. So I'm going to work just a little here because we have the separation between his back and his tail. I'm just going to do that much, I think. Again. And then we've got quite a bit of dark in this area. So I'm going to introduce that here. There's a bit here, a little bit up there. And again, this is most, this is just pretty much pure paint I've got on my paintbrush right now. And I, what I want to do is just come in and suggest some of the directions of that tail fur. I'm going to pull some of that in and also push some of that out. see the closer we get to the back the less you see really the the pieces of tail um, fur so I'm gonna leave that relatively untouched but I'm gonna come in with a bit of a wet brush not too too wet and pick up some paint and I'm gonna really define this bottom edge of the tail now where it's hitting the body and that will help define oh that's tail oh that's a body <laughs> You know, we need to have that value change in order to tell what is tail and what isn't tail, so. I'm going to introduce some of that around the outer edge of that leg. That helps define that that area is indeed in sunlight. And let's see here. really wet brush I want that color but not the value so I can just drop it in to the rest of the tail now I'm going to come out with my color shaper again and just see opportunities where I can make it look more fur like as opposed to paintbrush but I'm going to leave this area pretty close to what it is there are some highlights in there we're going to come in and add with a lighter value Nice. Okay. Well, maybe you just pull a little off that edge. Okay. Oh, I really like that. That's coming along. So I'm going to take some of that watery version and pick it up on my paintbrush. Now it's watered down. I just want to kind of go over the lines that we did a bit earlier where his rolls are. That will help us. Um, redefine those dark areas because we went over there with quite a bit of gray too and we lost them so this will help bring them back and then uh, again we can redefine those those areas this is a bit of a warmer neutral it's not even really a gray because I don't have any white in it it's more just a glaze a warmer glaze now that is tending on the dark side because of the alizarin crimson 
and uh, I'm just really happy with the effect I'm getting with it. So <laughs> I gotta stop dropping my paintbrush today. Okay, let's bring some here. And I'm going to bring that down and glaze that whole underarm only because I need a way to say, wait, something's different here than what is up there. And by making this arm a bit warmer, it makes it appear like it's in front of the cooler area behind it. The arm I forgot to paint in. <laughs> now see how that's just jumping out now that that arm has been warmed up? There, okay. That's really sweet. Now I want to add just a bit of this warmth on top of this foot. Off to the edge. Coming down this way. Underneath the belly. And... <laughs> nice. Okay, I'm really happy with that. I think... I'm just pooling that now on my palette. And I'm gonna pick up just a bit more of that warm, dark glaze and just do a bit more detail. Sort of around this paw. I don't want it to look finished, but at the same time, I don't want it to kind of stop abruptly either. That was sort of bugging me. So I'm just suggesting the paw by painting around it. Now I'm going to just take a wet brush and I'm going to bring that up to those edges and that will give us a very, very faint outline without making it look too contrived. Okay, so he's starting to look like he's popping out in the sun. I'm really, really liking how he's going. So I think what I'm going to do now, we're just about done. I just want to kind of introduce a cooler white into some of these areas un underneath the belly. And then uh, just in this area around the ear and in a few spots on the tail. And then it's time to just reinforce those lights and those darks. And we are done. I'm really happy with how this one's coming along and I may play with this I do really like the teal this bright teal color um, I may play with that just for a jazzy fun effect we'll see we're not quite there for me yet but we're getting closer <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in now I'm going to make another dark and I'll keep this dark on the blue side so again um, um, ultramarine blue alizarin crimson just about equal parts I'll leave it a little heavier with the blue though this time and again, uh, Azo Gold. Let's see here what kind of blue we got. Uh, that's a very purpley color. Let's, that just means I've got too much red, so I'm going to add a bit more blue. And I'll see. Ah, that's better. Okay, that's more blue. That's just what I wanted. Okay, so I'm going to bring in some white just over to it. Mix a bit of that blue in. Let's see what happens. Oh, nice. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so I'm going to concentrate on sort of this area and then this area here. Just adding some of these lighter gray blues here and in this area. And that's going to help us develop that three-dimensional shape even more. And I think I'm even going to use my bigger brush for the under parts. I don't need to cover the entire area. I can just drop it in um, and then use a color shaper to move it around. So I think I'll drop that there. 
and let's see we'll bring that down around this part of the front of that paw and then pull some of that out over top of what we've already done some of those marks give that suggestion of fur and we could do a couple pulled up towards the arm doesn't need to be a lot but just a few okay and I think I need just a bit here and I'm gonna bring it in underneath the arm that will help that little arm stand out a bit more we'll pull some of those fur like bits down towards the shadows I'm just gonna do that there and use my brush a bit so it's a bit thicker we get some thicker fur impressions do that around the hand up to the paw here our little friend is really taking shape i do i love squirrels i feed the birds quite a bit um and you know this time of year especially with the mamas having all the baby squirrels um they need their nourishment too and I don't mind them out there eating my bird seed because they're just little creatures like everything else. We're creatures, they're creatures. I like it when I'm well fed. <laughs> and I'm just going in and reinforcing those areas where I really want that value change to be noticeable. And I think it's coming along good. There. Now I'm going to come in just up in this one little area here. The um, It's just going to add more round dimension for us. And it also still, it really helps pop that front, uh, the front limb out on this little guy. I'm not going to do too many fur-like marks here because we are going to have whiskers coming right across that. And uh, I don't want it to feel too busy. So I just want a few well-placed marks. And then there's a bit of a highlight on this little, uh, the muzzle of this little guy's mouth, um, just underneath his snout in this area. He's got a bit of a I'm going to pick up some of that and just, now I'm just picking it up towards the back because the front bit of this is quite substantially brighter than towards the back of his muzzle there. I'm going to add some of that highlight here to the tip of his snout and down the front of his mouth just to give some definition there and it actually that's what I'm seeing when I look at the reference photo too so and that comes down onto his hand the top of his hand here or paw I guess depending on what you're seeing and just a suggestion just a few dots of that color to that side of his muzzle I think will be fine and uh, yeah I like that that's coming along nicely I'll just pull up some of that color there let's see um, I think I'll make it a little darker and I'll introduce some of that to the front arm just so this to me seems a little foreign it's so I'm just gonna add a bit of this gray and this is gonna dry a bit um, 
um, flatter and darker. I just find there's just too much contrast between our previous layer, which this is, and what we're doing now. And, uh, and in her reference photo, there's quite a bit of mottled gray in this portion of her forearm or his forearm. So I, I want to make sure I represent that. Um, but this is darker than, than what we did here, which will just, again, it's just going to help us develop that uh, form and make it look three-dimensional which is, you know, really what we want. And I love it. There's still a bit of that lovely bright blue popping through uh, the one edge of that uh, paw, and it's, it's working there. I don't, we don't really need to do anything with that. Um, and again, I'm still using a really big brush here. This is my, my 20, so um, I could be using a liner brush right now, but then I might just be... Um, compelled to paint fingers actually in. <laughs> I don't want to do that. And I'm just going to add in some some strokes that look like it might be fur. Uh, I find that line just a bit distracting, so I'm covering that up just a little. Oh, sweet. She's really coming along. I'm gonna make that, I'm making the darker edge of the snout just a bit smaller by put, coming over it with this lighter, paler value. And it looks like we've gotta bring that around this way. That was a bit much. <laughs> it's a little too thick, so I'm gonna come and use my color shaper, make it a bit smaller. Use your Q-tip. Um, Again, just sort of following what I'm looking at in the reference photo. This is a nice transitional between the really light light and the really dark, darker darks. And I'm going to introduce some of this just up on top of this brow. Remember I said there was an opportunity to come in and make this more three-dimensional. And uh, so that's what I'm going to, to work on here now. Because I'm really, I'm really happy with the way this turned out and the way this turned out. So um, if I can get the dimension on this eye here, I'll be really happy. Again, still using a really big brush. Yeah. I think that came up a little too high. I may have to come in and make that a bit smaller. And this sort of comes this way and fades off that way. Now I'm just working on trying to get that eye shape correct. And come here and add that here as well. Now, I'm gonna just put a bit of a catch light in with this. This is a duller this is not a bright, bright um, gray, so or a light. And with the this eye being in shadow, it will have a catch light, but it won't be a bright white catch light because it's seeing things over here in shadow, not things over here in sunlight. And uh, I think I'm going to come in and just try and do, there is like a little tiny bit of a lighter line at the bottom of the eye here, which I will do my best to suggest here. I will come in with my either a liner or a zero and add in my light light and my dark dark here on this eye. And I came in a little too high there. So I'll just take some of that off. Nice. I'm just looking for opportunities now to use up that color that I, I made. It's a pretty, pretty gray. And again, it seems to be a transitional color between the darker shadows and the lighter lights. And, uh, and again, being a gray squirrel, this is helping reinforce that the squirrel is indeed gray, not a, not a brown or, or you know, 
um, a red squirrel and keeping the grays in the especially this lovely light pale gray I'm going to introduce some of it back here and this will dry you know it's not going to dry quite as light as what we're seeing but it can help me break up areas um, where my marks are, are a little too severe like there's a line right here that um, I think is it needs to be broken a little and I think this neutral gray is going to be perfect to just sort of drop in a little um, in the odd spot just a few little tiny pieces that say hey wait there's more going on here than this one solid area of this darker value so and again we've got a bit more of a little too heavy-handed there ah, see it even happens to the best of us um, and there's a bit of light coming down into that top of that thigh. And again here. Okay, we're getting the gray back in our, our little gray squirrel. But we really need to, to do that glazing for us to... Um, you know, we established our values, established our shapes, and now we're getting that final feel. And again, I'm just going to make some fur-like marks there into that gray. And kind of come in this way and pull that down a little. I, uh, again, make those rounded marks. Now I'm just going to dab it and lift it and pull it down so we get that sense of, of uh, roundness and again I'll do that here as well. They will dry a bit darker and I'm going to pull some of that up and That's coming along. She's looking sweet. I'm going to pull some of this gray off of the arm. I just found that line was a bit too distracting. And pull that right off there. And I'm going to reinforce some of that. It gets a bit paler around the ear here as we get these sort of rounded tufts. I'm just going to bring some of this up over his brow here or her brow I'm gonna bring some of that just in here now I'm coming in gonna come back in with my darks here because I'm not hundred percent in love with the shape I'd made earlier and that's okay because I can correct it now I'm coming back in and just suggesting some of the fur around the ear and and this area over here and let's see I'm just gonna come in and make a that shadow is a little too big behind the ear so I'm going to correct that now better and it's pretty much that gray there and drop some of this bring it down going to do some on the edge of that ear there and lift it and lift that up a little now let's see here I think what I'll do now is I'm just going to come in with, I'm going to wet the brush with the color on it. It's got that lovely gray. I'm going to come in with the wet brush and I'm going to distribute some of that gray along the head. And don't worry because that will dry quite randomly and we'll get some really interesting marks and we'll have the opportunity to come back in and uh, 
I'm going to drop that up here because these are basically the lightest areas in our piece. Here, here, um, right here. And I will lighten this up a little. Here a little. I'll just lift some of that so it's not quite so an abrupt change in value there. And that has to come right out in front. Oh, there we go. So it's coming. It's coming. And now we're just going to come back up into the tail. We're going to pull out some opportunities now for this kind of this grayer highlight where the sunshine is kind of coming in and highlighting certain areas of the tail. And, and again, this is still a gray white. This is not a white white. It's not a, a warm white. I'm still using the gray white that we mixed. But it's a light value and it will allow us to build off it. <laughs> She's so cute. I'm going to come in just with sort of a brush, brushy stroke coming along that bottom space there. Here, sort of bring that over there. And let's see, we've got kind of a mottled gray there. And bring that down here. the bottom of this foot and just lift it there a little and let's see I think we have an opportunity to there wanted to make that foot more similar in value because I don't want it so significant it's gonna take your eyes somewhere else I'm gonna introduce a bit of this lighter over here because there's just not a lot going on here. And although I don't want huge value extremes, I want some detail, enough that it still says foot, so, or paw, <laughs> yes, paw. <laughs> Speaking of squirrel, one is coming up to my feeder right now. Aww. And then we have one sort of there. I think that may be enough detail. I might just add that another one of those little marks in there. So there's still a bit of water in here, so I'm not getting a, a great um, line, and that's okay. This is a good opportunity to to see where you can lighten your values in some areas and darken them in others. And, and you still want your values to be correct. Oh, that's sweet. Okay, so I'm gonna come back in and just put a bit more of this gray here up into this area, up here. And I want to make the top of the tail a bit quieter than the bottom because we don't want eyes coming right up and off, which I've said before. Nice, okay. So there's, um, we go from nothing to a lot of busyness. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a, a middle gray and just come in and make some flicks with my liner brush that will, you know, represent fur. And then, because we're going to come in with a highlighter um, type of stroke and highlight some of the, the little pieces standing in sunshine. So this is just a, a kind of a mid-value gray mix from what's on my palette. It will dry dark. It won't look like a bright, but it's going to make, it's going to give the illusion a depth here and those highlighted little pieces of fur.
Now I can, now that I have my liner brush out, I can come in and pull some of those out. I don't want to do this a lot, but just, you know, some, it's a different mark than what we've been making so far. And I think that uh, there's an opportunity to take advantage of that. I'm going to come in and there was a bit of a darker line coming down this back hip. I'm just going to reinforce that a little. I lost it. There. I don't want to bring it too far down. And I'm going to go back up here and I'll just do a few more lines, breaking up some of these areas. I think I want to do just a bit more in there. Just a bit too, too, too many larger air there. That's better. But I am going to come in and just, <laughs> I wanted to break that space up, but okay. Sweet. And I still have lots of that color on my brush, so. Um, now I'm going to take, I like that, I'm going to come in and add a bit of detail just up here around the ear. So now what I'm looking at is areas where my center of interest is. And this is the eye. I still have to kind of correct the brow on this side. I'm aware of that. So I'm going to come in now and just do sort of my work here. And I still have to add whiskers. And then I will evaluate for lighter lights and the brightest, the brightest brights and the darkest darks. drying up a bit. I feel I, I've kind of lost my darks in this area, um, but I really do like what's going on with the, um, the back paws, with the belly, with this front arm, with the front paws. I really do like this detail. So it's just, I think, as I, as I finish it up and put on the final darks, um, uh, fixing up the eyes, I'll just come back in and put a bit more dark there. But I think I, I do like the dark a little warmer. There's so much cool gray here. I find the warm uh, dark makes makes it feel like it pops a little for me, or a little more anyway. Um, when you set, and I think what it is, is there's just so much of this cool gray. When you set the warmth against it, it makes the warm pop out. So that's my thinking behind that. Now I do have a nice blue dark. What I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna add some of the alizarin to it to cut it uh, to tend a little on the warmer side. I get my dark a little closer to red than blue. Now you'll see my uh, palette uh, download or information on my website and I do prefer for my dark pa paints the alizarin and the ultramarine I find golden has the best pigments and uh, I get the best darks through them so um, I've tried the triart um, tried some of the the lesser expensive quality acrylics and just did not have any success with dark. So I'm gonna come back in now. And again, I don't have to do this all over. We've done that already. I'm just sort of reinstating them in areas where they're important. And this is a really nice, this red, because it's, it's in the same family as this magenta. So it's going to help us, um, uh, you know, make this dark convincible. I'm just sort of following where we see these darks popping up here and there. And just breaking up that little patch of white a bit. We will still come in and do the, the highlights uh, in that tail there. 
And let's see, just a couple out this way. Nice. I'll just introduce just a little bit up in this area so it's not quite so isolated in that part of the tail. Um, maybe add a bit of water to my brush too and make it a bit watery. And that way when it dries, it won't be quite so, um, so dark. It'll have a bit more depth to it. Yeah, this little, this little guy is so cute. So cute. Okay. Now I'm gonna, I didn't quite mix enough, so I'll just have to make a bit more. I'm gonna come in now. I'm just back down in this area. And I can just take a little bit of that off with my finger. I'm gonna come in around this end of his Now I'm just adding it in where we've already established a few darks, um, just to make the darks look consistent. Because of course, when we mix our darks and we're not using black paint, it does change from layer to layer. So if I just sort of quickly layer over the earlier darks, then it looks like we've used it throughout the entire painting and it doesn't look just so isolated in the final layers. So, um, which is, you know, kind of what I'm going for. And now what we're doing too is, is because we're getting closer to that end stage, we're going to be able to move the eye around our, our composition by utilizing these darks. So, you know, we're going to come kind of into our picture frame here. We've got this beautiful dark, this area of, of um, in, in shadow here, your eye will come across and then it's going to come up to this this beautiful paw kind of come up here to the hand, up and around into the face or up this way. And you spend some time here looking at this and then you kind of follow the tail and you're back out. Now you can either come in here, come in here and it brings you back and follows you through. So that's the sign of a good composition. You wanna use, utilize the tools that you have to move our eye around. Um, so they're not just static. And now this is a bit of a different dark. So I'm gonna go ahead and just layer it in the darkest parts on the paw in the sun only. I don't, we don't need a ton of detail to this little paw because this is the one in shade. Um, so it's this, this paw here that's gonna have the attention drawn to it. And I'm gonna have to switch to a, a bit of a smaller brush very shortly because this one's even getting a little too big for some of the detail I want to put in there. So I think I'll do that now. I'll switch back to my liner brush. Which I've had sitting in water. There we go. So and I, I, I wipe the water out of my paintbrush and I just, this is the stage where we just use mostly uh, mostly paint, very little water. Usually the only time I introduce water is if I'm cleaning the color out of my brush. Um, but as we finish our layering, we want to make sure that um, we have more paint in there. I'm just outlining the outer edge of the ear up against where it has that beautiful back lighting behind it. I may come in and do that just one more time once that layer dries a bit. We'll see. I'm going to pull that down and it looks like we've got to just sort of reinforce the front edge here, down into here. Okay. And I think I'm going to suggest just a few tufts of fur there and that gives you separation between the head and the the ear and here 
It looks like we've got a couple of tufts that kind of come off our shadow behind this ear. And I want to just sort of clean up that area. And again, we're going to just outline where it meets the lighter sunshine, because that's where that dark is going to appear the darkest, right where the edge is, where the sunshine is hitting. And let's see here. Let's come down to the eye. So there appears to be a bit of a, a dark line that comes this way on our reference photo. It sort of follows the outside edge of the, um, of the brow. Nice. And this kind of comes out just, oop, <laughs> that was a bit much. Um, but there are just a bit more darks in there. And I'm going to come back up and just sort of, there we go. That was what it needed. And again, we've got to kind of come up in behind the eye. And that will give the eye a bit of shape. Now there's a bit of a, a layer in there. I'm going to introduce some gray that I already have, we've already got this gray on our palette. I'm just sort of mixing it with some of the um, the whiter light, the light yellow that we had, because I do want to get a bit more detail into the lights on the, um, the squirrel's brow. So there's a bit of a light, oh, that's not even light enough. Okay, so I'm just going to add some titanium white to that gray and just bring that in there. And then there seems to be a bit of a line there. There's some stuff going on here, which I'll leave. And then there's a bit of a bright line that comes that way. Now I will just take off. There's a little bit of a, there we go. Now I've lost the roundness to the eye. So I will come back in with my dark and bring that eye, it needs to come up a little. It's much smaller <laughs> than the eye on the other side. And that's fine. Uh, you know, I'm noticing it now that I'm coming in and doing my details. So we're gonna give uh, that a bit of detail there. Highlight the corner of the eye just a little. And uh, I'm gonna pick up and highlight just down this way and in here. There seems to be some fairly pale fur. Yeah, and I like the way the rest there, you know, this is not super important. It's this in here and the tail that's super important. So, you know, as long as this, we're just gonna have whiskers coming out and over this. So as long as this is relatively believable, that's all I need. Um, now there is some whiskers, well, not whiskers, but so just underneath the eye, there's some fine pieces of fur. So I'm gonna add those there. And what that'll do is it makes that eye even more believable because there's detail kind of coming off it and it, the eyes just not sitting there in space. There. Okay. So we're going to come over to the snout now with some of that dark. And again, it's just more or less coming into the to the uh, the V here and just around the edge of the snout. Now, in all honesty, I think my snout might be just a smidgen long, but you know what, it's still believable and uh, just depending on the camera angle, you know, that, that could be, and like people, I'm gonna assume that they all have varying degrees of uh, snout size. I'm just going to come in and I'm just suggesting some of that detail that's there. Um, and there's more of a pale gray along this edge here where it comes under there. I'm happier with that, I think. And This is where I, I can get fussy because I just, 
I want to make sure that what my eyes are seeing is believable. There. Now I need to have a bit of a pale white here. It's got, he's got quite a bit of a highlight coming there and a little here, which sort of suggests that yeah, his mouth is rounder or um, there it is. There. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we need to. So what I'm going to do, I do have light gray on my, my brush right now. I'm going to suggest where the whiskers are coming out of his snout or her snout. Because I'm not sure exactly what we're dealing with, if it's a boy or a girl. And I will come back in with a dark and uh, more gray because we're going to have to pull those out and off of the face. But now at least I have a guideline of where I'm going to put them. I'm going to come back in with that gray and just sort of define a little bit more along the bottom edge of the mouth. And there seems to be some furry bits there. Okay. Now I'm going to come up to the top of this eye. There's a light patch sort of on top of the brow right in here. Oh, and that's not light enough. So I'm going to try that again. And uh, right in here, we have a bit of a highlight on his brow or her brow. <laughs> So he's grilly and that kind of comes down and then we lose that reflected light so I'm going to come in here and I'm mixing this with my light gray so I can just sort of reinforce this coming down and also coming up along the bottom too I think I keep getting the wrong shape. It needs to be more round. There we go. What I'll do is I'll come in with my dark and I'll fix that because I don't have the eye shaped right towards the front, towards me. Okay, that's looking good. I'm just making some whiskery shaped marks in there under the eye to give it a bit of interest. Um, it's the shadow side, so there's not a ton going on but it breaks up the monotony of that space. And uh, I'm gonna come back in with my gray. And uh, I'm just gonna suggest a few little gray. I'll take those out. This this area here is just, um, it's just a little, it's claiming too much importance to me. So I wanna just break that up just a bit. So I'm just gonna make some random little uh, marks and pick them up. I'm not looking to change the value of it. I'm just trying to change the level of importance my vision is giving it, so. There, pardon me, that's better. Okay, so a few whisker type shapes in here. And, uh, good, okay. So let's see, we're gonna come up to the top of the head. So there's a bit of a, a bit of um, highlighted fur just right in here that says, oh, you've hit the uh, the edge of the ear. I'm going to re-evaluate that uh, light here and bring that down into the fur. And I may just pull a little. There we go. That's better. Um, let's see. We'll come back in and reinstate this with a warmer white, warmer white. Okay, so I'm going to go back to a bit of my dark now and uh, just come in through the light behind the ear and right underneath the ear. Just sort of in here. And there's a bit of a line underneath as well. Now I'm gonna come over here to the eye and I'm going to make sure. So I wanna make sure I got that shape to the eye right. And he comes this way, down, 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 down. And a little bit of a, there. Oop, 
take my color shaper. Force a habit, I've gone right back to using the one that I, I've had for forever. But I will, I really like that new one though, so I'll definitely get more practice in using that one. Just gonna add a few of the marks with this darker um, value that I have on the my uh, liner brush right now. Because our um, when we come in and do the whiskers from this side, they'll match these values. So they won't, uh, they won't look quite so isolated. So I'm gonna come in and just uh, suggest Just a bit more detail to break this little spot up here and here and I'm gonna lift that with my finger I just want a bit of detail but not so much that it's gonna steal the show as our whiskers are gonna do that when they get them we get those put on and I'm gonna come back up it through here and there's a wee bit of a no oh yeah so I just made I was too liberal with my light there so I'm just following those lines that are gonna give our creature that quintessential quintessential shape that he is standing on his haunches or she is. So anything that can help contribute to that, that's what I'm gonna make sure is really successfully rendered. Anything else? I'm not gonna sweat it too much and just Coming in behind that, because that light is, is really important to help lead the eye. So I wanna make sure it's a bit darker behind and in front of it. So it's all relative. So the darker the fur is behind and in front of that light, the more important that little patch of light is going to become. So let's see here. We've got a few highlights that will come in here. I'm just gonna make a few like strokes as I kind of move down into the belly of our little friend. <laughs> Let's see. That's good. I like that. I'm going to wet my brush. And just make a bit of a glaze. I just want to cover this is in shadow so I'm just going to cover that little portion up there. Now see how it's, I'm not take, I'm not changing the gray. It still reads as gray, but it's just not um, quite so stark. And these are the areas that are in shadow. So I wanna make sure they still appear that they're in shadow. There, okay. What a cutie. I'm just gonna come in now and fix the bottom of the front eye because I didn't put it really in the right spot. I mean, I did, it's just, I keep coming up in this corner and it needs to come a bit, just a tiny, tiny bit more rounded. So I'm gonna do that now and actually I'm gonna put my reading glasses on so I make sure I do that correctly. This is one of those subtle details where if you don't get it right, you may look at the painting and go, I don't know, that's a weird looking, there's something wrong with that squirrel. And you may not be able to put your finger on it, but something just as simple as having the line of the, the under eye incorrect could be enough to put you off the piece and, and take it from a piece you might collect to a piece you, you just don't wanna look at because it, it makes you uncomfortable because you can't figure out what it is that you don't like about it. So I'm gonna bring this up to give the illusion of roundness at the front of the eye. I know there's a water line or a tear duct there. And I'm going to give a bit of a darker base to the orb in the eye as well. I'm not covering up the entire water line. The water line's still there. It's just more suggested now. And then at the top of the eye, it's gonna be darker as well. Um, so just along this top, because it's gonna have a shadow from the eye eyelid. So there, now while we're working on the eye, I'm gonna come over to the one across from it and I'm going to bring that up just a little and out. It just needed to be a bit bigger. And uh, not quite the right shape yet, but I'll get there. It tends to come out. There we go. 
and okay and I'm just gonna take a little bit off that edge Again, we're pretty much in final details. That's why I'm paying attention to things, the, the significant things like the shape of the eye. And Okay, let's see where we're gonna go now. Okay, I'm just gonna go back up with some of this dark and I'm going to do a bit more of the detail around the, um, not so much the ear, the ear's got good detail. So let's come up into the, to the brow area here. I need to kind of fix the shape of the top of the brow so it kind of comes up this way and there's some activity here and it comes down there's a bit of a there we go that's a bit more like it let's just now, there is a seam or a darker, a darker line just sort of at the top of this little guy's brow. There, I'm just gonna suggest that. And now, the bottom here is far too big so let's make that smaller because he has a tiny tiny little water line what I'm gonna do is just make a, a lighter version of the color I just put down there and see if I can come in this may or may not work I'm not sure I'm hoping it will okay I'm going to come in and bring some of that color I just made up into the upper uh, area as well. We don't want it isolated just on the bottom lash line because then it'll just, it, it'll look odd. I'll be like, why is that only showing up there? I'm going to come back in and do my lights and my highlights here. I just want to make sure that the eye shape is correct. And it's actually not. <laughs> His eye looks quite large to me. Um... I think what I'll do, rather than repainting the eye, I'm going to suggest the waterline again. I think what's happened is I've covered up the waterline. Now this whole thing is looking like an eyeball when it's not. So I'm going to do that. Oh, see, this is good. You get to see me fixing, fixing mistakes. <laughs> and then what I'll do is I'll come in with that gray. This is this goes down too far. That's what the problem is. This needs to be like that. So that's all I did is I made his bottom. His bottom lid came down far too much. And that's better. come back in with my dark again in here and do the bottom of the eye not going all the way to that water line there, there. so now what I'm gonna do is just um, clean that little bottom part up that I just made and I'm just gonna use a mixture of the grays that are already on my palette. And just sort of come in and I wanna get rid of that one water line. There we go, that's a bit better. I'll just introduce some of the color I'm working with 
in other areas around the eye, so it's not isolated. I don't want people to go, oh look, she made a rip repair down at the bottom of the eye. She obviously didn't do it right. So by introducing that color as we're painting into other little areas, then uh, it doesn't look like, oh, I've come in at the end and, and sort of fixed an issue that I was having, so, okay. I'm just gonna touch up this one more time. Nice. And I just have to reinstate the oop the upper lid line here. This comes. The eyes are relatively important, you know, if you don't get them right, people notice. So it's kind of when I when I spend a lot of time on something, it's usually because I'm trying to get that the um, the features and the character of the eye right. And you know, lots of people say to me, I can't believe you make you know these animals have expressions. And this is why because I I do take my time building the depth around the eye and making sure my values are right and. I really, you know, I do want this to look like it's a, um, it's a uh, three-dimensional eye peering out at us. Now, I don't have, this shape here is not correct, so I'm coming in with my dark and I'm just sort of fixing that. And I'm gonna do, an, uh, I'm just gonna go inside and line the inside of that upper lid line, because that will have shadow. And let's see. There's a bit of a highlighted water line, so I'm gonna just add that. Because if I don't, it's gonna bug me. And that will also help give the eye um, some depth and dimension. I'm gonna just use my color shaper to clean that up a little tiny, tiny bit. not 100% happy with that. So I'm gonna come back in with my dark at the bottom and over top of that and reinstate them. And again, you know what I think it is, is I just need to put my, my reading glasses on so I can see it. There we go. That's much better. And now I'm gonna come in on top of that and There, better. Okay, I think that eye is done. Good. Now what I'm gonna do, now that I've got the dark on my brush, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna start suggesting where the, um, the whiskers are gonna come in off the side of his, this side of the snout. I've got them in, in pale color over here because that side's in sun. So I'm gonna come in and just sort of suggest very lightly right now, and then we'll come back in. The last thing we'll do is put the whiskers on. We're almost there. Um, so many whiskers this little baby has. And Okay, back to my Nice, okay, so that gives me a good idea when I come back in, I can make more um, realistic looking whiskers. I'm coming up and establishing the shape up here, coming a bit further into the head area. I'm getting the uh, together. 
And there's some darker brush strokes that will bring our eye back here to his ear. And I'll establish that dark there. It kind of wraps up and around the ear. I'm not going to paint the, the fur all the way across the top of the head. We don't need to do that. We just need to suggest where some of the, the lighter areas are, the darker areas, and the mid-value areas. Unless you really, you know, if you really are dying to paint every piece of fur on this little guy, you you are welcome to. I'm, I'm just not going to. <laughs> now we do have um, on the tops of the heads of some of these smaller critters are uh, these beautiful little kind of like I don't know if they're eyebrow hair <laughs> or what they are but they do come up and off the top so don't be afraid to you know bring a few pieces up that way as well and I think I'm going to suggest that his ear is a bit wider but I'm not going to fill that in and I'll lift it just a bit okay good nice I think his face has got pretty much all the detail. I think I'll just quieten down some of these brighter areas here. Because we will come in and we will make our highlight. And I'm gonna suggest some darker fur shaped lines in here. And I'll bring them over this way just a bit so they, they kind of marry into the dark behind that eye. Now these this is not my darkest dark. I've sort of mixed that with some of the lighter colors on the palette. And I'm just coming in and suggesting movement. So this is relatively quiet. So all the detail, we come in and we come in these areas of detail and we sort of move along them. And that's sort of why I want more definitive brush strokes, more definitive brush strokes. You want to make sure the eye is the correct size up into this ear um, and then across up into this ear and then down up into this arm, um, maybe down to this foot and then I can come in and just do a suggestion of some darker and that will help bring your eye up into the tail. And I don't think we really need to do any anything else to the tail. Um, I'm afraid if I do, it will just take away from, I like it, it's got that nice, nice freshness from it. And it's still got lots of layers from the very first layer. So that's nice, I like that. I like our shadow side definitely looks in shadow. So we just need to make our sun side look like it's in sun now. And we're going to, I'm gonna mix up a nice pale, pale yellow very pale like we did before with even less yellow just a little dot of yellow on my uh i'm not sure if you can see so i'm just mixing with my titanium white and my hansy yellow middle and all i did was just take a little dot on the end of this <laughs> and we're gonna come in now and uh i think i'll do two coats of our lightest lights and uh we'll come in now and establish them and this is where we'll see if there's any value issues, because if our darkest darks don't pop out by doing this, then we can go in and we can sort of re um, reestablish those as well. And again, I don't want you to think of these as little paws. I want you to think of them as just shapes. There's a little bit of a line and sort of followed by a inverted, like a strange angled triangle. And then down below that is more of another partial line, partial line, and uh, sort of a, a partial line there, and a little bit of a V. So I try not to think in terms of what I'm painting as far as, uh, you know, naming that thing. You don't really, uh, you don't need to. And it, I've read in the past that when you name it fur, hair, eyes, then our brains kick in and want to paint what we think fur, hair, and eyes look like. And that's not necessarily going to read as the correct thing and what we're painting. So I'm coming in, I'm reestablishing. We had set some, some lighter values here earlier with, with the pale white and yellow, and that's wonderful. I'm just coming back up and I'm reestablishing those. 
And I'm trying not to, you know, keep my brush strokes uniform. I'm trying to keep them a bit um, uh, varied. I want some variation there. And uh, These guys are a bit longer. Okay. And this side of his little, his little snout has a few. And again, I'm not outlining. Don't, please don't outline. Resist that urge. <laughs> if you're doing a line drawing, feel free. But when you're painting, um, outlining is just I, I don't know. It just, to me, it just makes pieces look contrived. <clears throat> and I'm going to come in and just a few dots of the pale color around the eyeball, just sort of to highlight. We don't need a lot. And then this upper, upper eye. I guess I lid, even though maybe it doesn't close the way ours closes. And there's a highlight there and a bit more there. Okay, nice. And let's see, did I miss anything down that way? I don't think so. There's a bit of a, oh, I did. On the snout there, there's like a, a, a little bit of an a V, inverted V, and then uh, a little bit here. And I can do some dots maybe join them up a little, more of a little bit of a scribble. And I can dab that just a bit. And uh, perfect. Oh, he's gonna jump off the page when we're done, isn't he? So we're gonna come up now to the ear and we're gonna bring back those highlights that just sort of tuck in behind the ear. Now we reinforced all these darks, which is gonna make these lights really pop out. And we're gonna do this right up to the beginning of that shadow. We're gonna do a highlight on the top, just towards the dark. I want it right beside that dark, because that is gonna give it that glow. And we're gonna drag that down the front just a bit. We don't want it consistent, so we're just gonna make things that look ragged, because fur, is it, it could potentially you know look a little ragged in that area so that's what i'm trying to do there and we're going to do the same we're going to come in behind that dark that we did we're just going to do some fur like highlights maybe some dots now there is also fur highlights here as well that's very bright behind these ears and we're just going to suggest something that looks like fur because our head's gonna, this is gonna pop the head out so much that this area is really insignificant. Um, all we know is when we look at it, there's something between the head and the tail. And that's when our, our, our imagination kicks in and says, oh yeah, there's a body. They're usually round and tubby, <laughs> depending on the time of year and where you live. Some squirrels, maybe not so much. I'm just gonna come behind this portion of the ear and uh, with that bright white, with just a bit bit of pale yellow and see how it's making our darks pop right off the page now and again I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to highlight down into those marks I made just a little earlier there and and we're gonna bring that pale color over here again don't outline just do some dots and dashes, some little fur-like tufts up to the tip of the ear. We're gonna bring that down now. Only part way, because we've got a good value difference there. And we're gonna come down in this area. And again, we're just fur-like marks, peter them out. And we're gonna come down. There's a bit of highlighting here, not a lot. 
suggest some lines. And when we get into this area, there's a bit of a... So look how much those sing because they're just surrounded by all these neutrals. <laughs> it's a cutie pie. Uh, okay, so we're good. I'm going to come in here and just suggest some fur, the, some longer bits that kind of come off the, the end of the body and up into the tail. And, uh, and of course, I'm going to peter those out because this area is in shadow, so um, just maybe the tops will get touched by the sun. Hmm. And we'll do a few coming down. Ah, I have a little piece of fur there, and that was a bit too thick, so. There we go, that's better. There. Okay, so, and we're just gonna pick up and do the odd little piece here. There's a few highlights, not a lot. It just says, look at the fur, it's so long and fluffy on this side that only the very tips are being seen in the sunshine. <laughs> what a little cutie. Now there's a bit of a, a highlight down here on one hip and this does not have to be very strong. So, and then a, a bit of like, I think it might be reflected light bouncing back at him this way. So I'm just gonna dab it just a little. And uh, nice. I'm gonna come in just a bit underneath because I think he's getting some reflected light here as well um, before we go into the tail. And just around his muzzle. Just a few dots, not a lot, a few dashes. Now I'm gonna come up, oh no, actually, I've still gotta do that foot. So I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna reestablish the lights on that back foot. And again, I'm, I'm not worried about whether this reads like a foot. I'm just going to put some marks of light near the dark so they play off each other. And I think it, you know, we've already got it kind of established and looking like a paw and a very furry paw at that. We did a good job at that. And this way, come bring that down like that. This comes in like that and do, 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 Nice, that's cute. Oh my goodness, look at that little paw. Okay, so let's bring in, so if we come around now, what's going to happen is we get some reflection off of the surface that he's sitting on reflects on this back area there so let's come in and we'll just highlight just a few we'll pull up into the fur that's there we don't have to do it all the way along just in a few spots and only where only where there's color beside the squirrel because where there's just the white paper it's not going to be effective and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push these out with my color shaper and uh, just suggest a bit of fluff so that's just fluff from his back being lit up in sunshine now we're going to come along we're going to take a look here so we've got quite a bit of highlight now it may not be 100% successful in this area because I have paper, white paper right there, but we'll add some over top of the darks, we'll add some highlighted um, pieces that look like it could be fur. Um, there's quite a few in this area and here. Now, what I'd like to do is, I'm gonna just suggest some of that coming up into the tail and then I'll dab it off. And I'd like to uh, suggest some of those little highlighted pieces of fur. So um, let's see, we've got a couple here. And hopefully if this works out right for me, it just looks like the ends of some of these little longer furs 
tufts of fur getting highlighted in the sun, which is, you know, basically what we're seeing. I'm just not sure if this is gonna actually um, suggest it, but I think it will. Um, I just, I was trying to make those as thin as possible, but <laughs> the color shaper did not help there at all. See, even I learn. Okay, so we're gonna pull some of those up. And, and over to this direction, which is the really sunny side. So feel free to just put in lots and, and lots of strokes. Just make sure you vary how far into the tail that stroke goes. Um, you want them all different, not all the same. And again, I'm not gonna do this all the way up. I'm only gonna do it about two thirds, and then I'll just do them less and less because I don't want the squirrel's tail, um, I don't want anybody's attention to go there immediately. They've got all that detail we've spent so much time working on. They better go and check that out first with their eyes <laughs> before they leave this piece. I mean, they're gonna have, they're gonna have to, well, we'll be having words. Okay, so I'm just gonna take some of that off and dab so it's not quite as significant as it is a little lower. And I may come in and do that again too, just to, just to solidify those. Now there's some marks up here as well in real, real light fluff. But you know, unless you're painting over the dark, we're not gonna be able to tell it's light fluff. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and make some fur-like marks. I just really like the way that initial energy of the magenta here came off the canvas and, uh, and flew, <laughs> flew over there. It looks really great. So I'm gonna come back in and just highlight um, with another layer. Again, the more um, layer I, layering I do with the pale colors, the, the more significant that becomes. So in some of these, if I want them to look like true highlights, I may have to come in two or three times and touch them. Um, same, same color paint. You know, it's a really light, light value, so it's not, I can't really make it any any more um, any more pale than what it is. I can just come in on top and do more layers of it. And as I build up the layers, it will feel more significant. And now I have basically just the whiskers left. Yay! I was hoping to get this little one done today and I still, I did and I've still got lots of time. And uh, I'm just, where the tail has those highlights. I'm just coming in and making sure they're there. I'm pulling them right into the tail in some areas. And I think it helps that sunlight shade, sunlight shade. And let's see now, I would like to just highlight the brow there, it has a bit of a highlight on it. And I'm gonna do that. right now and then it's whisker time whisker time and i'm gonna just give this one more touch i just find that lip is not there we go it wasn't lighting up the way i was hoping to see it light up okay and just a little tiny tiny bit just above that dark just a little just a few marks that could suggest fur that's being highlighted. And again, we're gonna just sort of come up into the fur. We're gonna highlight where we see on his head fur-like things. And we don't have to do this all over. We can just do a few different pieces up, aiming up towards the ear and that's where our eye is gonna carry us because we know, ooh, it's dark there. That means that there must be sunlight hitting the other side. And now I'm just adding some around that transitional area. And just a couple, I think, need to be brought in here. And just along this edge, I think we have an opportunity to add some highlight Okay, good. 
That's coming along nice. I'm gonna come in and just brighten up the sun hitting above the eye here and this one little spot there. And now we are going to do our, I think, actually I just need to bring some highlights over a little. I think I made his space here a little too large with that now that I've, I'm looking at it. And we'll bring a couple of highlights down towards his little muzzle. Okay, now he has a beautiful highlighted whisker here and I do like that effect. So it might be nice to do a couple and I'm going to come in and just sort of suggest so it kind of comes straight off there and it's just underneath his eye. So let's just do that. And I will just use my finger to fade it off. So now I have a guideline to follow and I'll do one. And I'm going to use my color shaper to pull that away because the color shapers have a really nice way of fading out those lines, which is the way whiskers fade out, right? And I can come back in and I can re-suggest that closer to his face. I'm going to bring in my other color shaper too. There. That's all we need. And uh, as I come in, it apparently turns from this beautiful light to a dark. So I'll leave it lighter out here. And then there's another one that's a bit bent. Just south of that one. Let's just do that one the same as we did the top one. Um, let's make it a bit shorter though. That's another thing with whiskers. Don't make them all the same distance apart and don't make them all the same length. Please resist. There, that's why I used a different color shaper for that one um, because then that way I won't get the same mark. I'm gonna come in now and establish some of these are a bit thicker. So this whisker here is quite thick and this whisker here is a little brighter than what I've got down there. And a little do 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 do. Um, and instead of just drawing lines too, I'm doing a few dashes because if there's any moisture on his whisker or dirt, you get kind of a dot-like effect. I can do some here as well, and uh, you know that's believable to our eye because when we actually see them, that's sort of what you see. So don't feel free. You got to vary that line. And uh, there's a bit of a lighter uh, touch down there. And I'm just gonna switch up now and I'm gonna switch to, and does he look like a squirrel that's in bright light? <laughs> Yay. I like sort of what's happening in the background now. Um, I didn't like this when we first started, but I do now because the squirrel is really right in front of me. And this is just happy stuff going on. Could be anything, could be a sidewalk, could be an art installation. Um, pardon my sniff. I got my vaccination and ever since I've, my symptoms have been, I've been cycling through a lot of them. Today, I couldn't taste my peanut butter. Okay, so I'm going to come in now with my dark. Time to start doing the darker whiskers and then we're good, we can sign this baby. I think. All right, so I'm again, I'm using my small liner brush. If you feel comfortable, you can use a, um, a palette knife. So you would just take a nice palette knife with a longer edge is really good for whiskers. And you dab it into your dark paint and you wanna lay it flat. Oop, I didn't do a good job and pull. So you get one long mark. I'm not that good at it. I'm actually better by with using a brush and my color shapers. Um, th that's a really good way to do it in oils and acrylics. So watercolor, not so much. But I'm gonna come in with just, just the pigment on my, um, on my brush. And I'm gonna come in just underneath that lighter, that lighter line that I made and add the darker whisker. There, perfect. I'm gonna come back in. So when you look at a whisker, the top is light, the bottom's dark. 
That's how we make form. I'm gonna come back in just underneath it here and here, and we'll do that. And we will do this, make that one slightly longer and they overlap. And I want the whiskers to look like they are in front of the fur, so <laughs> they, they will need to be quite, not thick, but the paint needs to be thick. Er. <laughs> there. And let's see, we're gonna come in and we'll go underneath this one with the dark. And that one's a little thick, so I'm gonna come in with my color shaper, move it just a little. There, nice, I like that. And it will dry, once it's dry, it won't look quite so significant. And then again, I'm gonna pull that with my color shaper, see if I can fade that end off. There, nice, okay. And you know, um, whiskers can have wobbles and wrinkles and things in them, so. I'll just add some extra, because they can be lighter and in the background. There's always lots and lots of whiskers that uh, don't really show up significantly. So there we go, we've got whiskers on the one side done. I'm just gonna pick a couple now to come in and, and make sure that they're They've got really, now this one's nice. I like the dark underneath it. Because again, even though it's in, it seems insignificant because it's such a thin line, that dark is gonna pull our eye down, bring us down, bring us over, bring us up. So we need to make sure, even though they're very thin, thin, faint lines, we pick a couple and we make those important as far as the design of our composition goes. Now I did that one a bit too thick, so I'm gonna come back in and fade that out with my color shaper. There, I think, ah! <laughs> okay, there we go, better. All right, so I think, oh no, I still don't like that. Okay, I'm gonna, hopefully I can take the end off without removing the underlying layer of paint. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna try this again now. Still don't like that. Oh, what am I doing? Okay. I think I'll just wipe it off and leave it then because apparently the universe does not want me putting that whisker on there. So it's just the suggestion of a whisker and I'm gonna actually come back in with a bit of a gray and just, there. And the one thing I don't like, there is a dot right there that's really dark. I'm just going to put a bit of a lighter gray over it because it was just, it was taking my attention away from the whisker, so. Good, good. So I think what I'll do is I'll just suggest a bit darker here and here. And then I think that's, that's good. That's good. Okay, so now we're going to come over this way. Now, I like the dark that's kind of around his nose. I don't think I really need to work on that. I just need to add my whiskers that are dark. So I've started some lines. What I'll do is I'll try to match up the white highlighted whisker we've already put there. And what I'll do is I'll try and come straight out from the muzzle to that whisker and come underneath that highlight there. I will come in and I'll reinstate that highlight too. Um, I think that was, I went on a little too long. Nice, okay, perfect. And I'll do that with the one underneath as well that's slightly bent. And we'll just suggest the rest of these. I wanna make sure they're at least approximately the same length as the, the ones on the other side of the face. I don't want them so long that they're they're gonna make it look odd. I'm just coming in and picking a few to, to, to darken. And what I'm gonna do too is I'm just gonna put a few dots here on the muzzle. Um, just, they're not gonna be so significant, but when animals have whiskers, they do have dots in their fur where the whiskers start. And this way it just 
it just says, yeah, there's, there's something going on where those whiskers are coming out from. And let's see now. I'm just leaning over trying to get a closer look at my photograph. I like that. I think that's good. So I think what I'll do now is um, suggest a whisker here. I just got to get a bit more paint on my brush. It looks like there's a couple of small whiskers here. And I want to suggest a couple of whiskers just above the eye. Because they do have whiskers that come out of their brows. Um, pretty much all furred fur-bearing animals seem to have this uh, brow whisker. And let's see, I can suggest one here. They don't have to be identical. Um, nice. I'm just going to re-establish the dark for that one that's highlighted. So the eye will definitely make it out there. And these whiskers are on the darker side of the squirrel, so um, other than that one little spot that's in highlight, they will all appear dark. Wonderful. Good. Oh, now that's sweet. Okay, I'm just seeing if there's any opportunities now to make... Um, any changes? Oh, there seems to be a bit of a whisker that comes in here. There. No, I'm just going to come in and re highlight that whisker and highlight these little guys. And then I'm signing this. I think we're good. Hope, oh, oh, as I say that, I pick up black paint. <laughs> Okay, so picking up my light again, I'm going to come in and just reestablish this, this one whisker here. I'm going to start a little bit closer to the face. Ooh, got a bit of wiggle of a wiggle there. And again, to the one underneath. And I'm just going to come in and, and do the lights again, um, coming out of the whiskers here. Just because they have such a dark underneath them, it makes them just pop right out. So that definitely gives us the sun on one side and shadow on the other effect. And I want to just take advantage of that. So look at that little baby. He is so friggin' adorable. Ah! All right, everybody, what do you think? I think we did well. I think we did really, really, really well. I'm happy. I was going to do more detail in the background and in the front, but you know what? I am not. I'm going to leave it because I really like my squirrel. I think he's adorable. Um, I'm going to sign that with the dark we've been using. And again, I'm going to come over here into this area because there's a lot of stuff going on there and I don't want to compete with that. There. Nice. My signature doesn't stand out too much. All right. Thank you for joining me. And uh, next week, we're working on um, a moose and a heron. So yeah, stay tuned. Thank you, everybody.